It's Thursday, and it's time for Thursday's coffee and cursy words, or thirsty for caffeine Thursday. I don't, we're going to find something. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Y'all had great suggestions, but I just haven't decided yet. Today, I have learned from my mistakes from last week, and we are going to not try to throw, or I guess from Tuesday, we're not going to try to throw anything else into this show today. There is so much left to cover in the unsealed documents that's interesting to me. Today is and I'm anticipating today to be our last live going over these unsealed documents. And then I'm going to be going through in a more succinct summary, my summary of everything I've reviewed. We're not reviewing everything here together live, but we are reviewing a lot of it live. So we're going to do all of that today. Um, what I have on the docket, just so you know what we're covering and replay crew Love you. So you get it too. We are covering um, the motions regarding the forensic digital imaging of the devices of Amber Heard. We're going to look at some of the motions in Lemonade. And then there was a plea and bar transcript of the UK trial. I'm interested to see what parts of that are newly unsealed because we have some of it that I've covered in a previous um it wasn't a stream. It was a podcast episode when I talked about the UK verdict. So with that, we're going to dive into all of these things today and continue to go through, um, you know, the last the last of the of the unsealed documents. So you can decide for yourself because there a there's a lot to go through and b it's it's the kind of the last round of unsealed. And then I'm hoping that we get to scoot along to all of the other cases that we've been meaning to catch up on. I'll talk about what that means in just a few minutes, but replay crew, timestamps will be timestamps will be down below. So if you're coming in and just want to get to a certain um a certain motion or a certain thing, those will be stamped and we should just get into it. We have a lot to do. I've got my coffee. Um it's a jug of coffee. It's why I was maybe just not exactly on time because I was making coffee because I always think I can do more in the time that I have. I realize this is an ADHD trait of mine. I always think that I can do more than I can. So let us roll the intro, get into this week's episode. Good to see you. If you are new to a live stream, if this is your first live stream, go ahead and pop a one in the chat and we're going to get going. Let's get going. Let's do it. Let's do the thanks. Hey there, if we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. And I was going on to tell the crew over on Twitter what's going on, and I'm seeing some uh, breaking news that I actually am really interested in. So I might pull up just one, just one article um, on a breaking news item because I am interested and I'm just seeing it. And the mods are like, we were so close <laughs> to just doing a one-topic stream, um, but... Here's what I'm seeing. And normally I don't cover breaking news because I'm waiting for there to be more information. But this is coming out of Reuters. Let me go Reuters. Let me go pull up the article. Um, let's see. Where is it? I'm looking for the source article, not just the thread. But it looks like basketball star Brittany Griner has been sentenced in Russia after her plea. And I'm going to pull that up and talk about it real quickly because I'm sure that the U.S. will still be trying to um, trying to have her released. But we're going to pull that up real quick. Do I often do breaking news? No. Why? Because there's often a lot of information that is still not apparent in breaking news. But this is this is going to be a they did what they did and it's being reported on news story, which is why we're going to take a look at it real quick. So you know, it's just, this is something I've been tracking. We haven't tracked a lot on the channel because again, I am not a lawyer licensed in the jurisdiction. I don't know. Um, I don't know a lot 
about the Russian laws, but that's why we I've been tracking it internally. But as I'm going on to share out to the tweet tweet on the street that we are live, um, I couldn't help but seeing that Brittany Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison in Russia. Um, Biden says it's unacceptable, faces nine years in jail. Well, if she's sentenced to nine years, I have no idea what her maximum was. Hopefully Reuters will let us know. Um, pleads for leniency. Lawyers sought her acquittal. United States has made um, Russia a prisoner swap offer. We'll see if that happens. Uh, let's see. R uh, Russian court sends U.S. basketball star to nine years in prison on Thursday after finding her guilty of deliberately bringing cannabis-infused vape cartridges into Russia. Yet Russia is not messing. Um, a ruling that President Joe Biden calls unacceptable was arrested mid-February. Her case uh, threw the Texan athlete into a geopolitical maelstrom, yeah, which I'm sure she had no intention of being a part of in in any way at all. Because she got a Russia, uh, arrested right before Russia um, invaded Ukraine. Her sentence could now pave the way for a U.S.-Russia prisoner swap that would include the 31-year-old athlete and an imprisoned Russian who was once an arms dealer. I mean, I just... On a personal note, we just need – look, I know it's just not that big of a deal. A lot of places still make it a big deal. It is not my place to tell other countries how to do it. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around it being this big of a deal. Just I have a hard time wrapping my brain around it being this big of a deal. So other – look, when you travel – Adhering to the laws of other countries is is paramount because a lot of countries will be like, oh, you're American. Fuck around and find out. And that is not that does not put travelers in a in a safe in a safe place, which is which is hard. So it's just again. Um, yeah, other countries do not do not play and do not do not care um, that you're American and this is not illegal where you are from. So she admitted to having the vape cartridges containing hashish oil, um, but said it was an honest mistake. I, I don't even know what, what percentage of weed. It doesn't matter. It's their laws, not ours. It's, you know, it, I'm not, again, can't tell another country how to, how to run their laws. Um, but the fact that they are looking to swap her for an arms dealer kind of tells you a little bit about this story on, on the low low. Before the verdict, she pleaded with a Russian judge not to end her life with a harsh prison sentence before breaking down in tears. The court also fined her 1 million rubles, so sixteen about 16,000 U.S. dollars. Biden, under pressure to help free Americans held in Russia, called on Russia to release. Greiner immediately said his administration would continue to work for her release. Uh, today, American citizen Brittany Griner received a prison sentence. That is one more reminder of what the world already knew. Russia is wrongfully detaining Brittany, Biden said in a statement. It's unacceptable, and I call on Russia to, Russia to release her immediately so she can be with her wife, loved ones, friends, and teammates. I mean, fair. The Russian prosecutor had called for Griner, a two-time Olympic gold medalist and a Women's National Basketball Association star, to be sentenced to nine and a half years prison if she was found guilty. She did plead. Normally, there's a reduction in sentence in the U.S., but that's different. Honest mistake. Greiner was detained in Moscow's um, airport February 17th with cartridges containing hashish oil in her luggage. While she pleaded guilty, she said it was neither intended to bring the banned substance into Russia nor to hurt anybody. Honest, I made an honest mistake, and I hope that you're ruling um, that it doesn't end my life here, Greiner said. My parents taught me two important things. One, take, owner, take ownership of your responsibilities, and two, Work hard for everything you have. That's why I pled guilty to my charges. I know everyone keeps talking about political pawn and politics, but I hope that is far from this courtroom, Griner said. And then it goes into her, uh, it goes into her history playing basketball. The geopolitical considerations, which would always have to be considered when you're looking at something that seems like it's not a big deal. Like, it seems like this isn't a big deal. It seems like a very small amount of a banned substance that is, I don't know how much hashish oil is banned. Are they just like, well, it's weed, it's banned. I don't know. Again, 
This is why I generally don't cover breaking news. However, that is the sentence. We will see what Russia does from here. I believe the maximum sentence she was facing was higher than this, and this is not the maximum sentence. Nine years is an awful lot of time. No idea what Russia will choose to do with whether she's out or not out. Um, it's just, it's wild. Amanda in the chat is asking, do you think it would be such a big deal if she was a pro athlete? I don't know. Um, and again, I am definitely not an expert in geopolitical conflict. I don't know if this is something that the same thing would have happened and we just would never have known about it. But when traveling, Americans have to respect the laws. Mistakes happen. And this seems like a very small error. She said it was an error. It seems like a small error. It's just absolutely wild. Um, but there is also little, it seems, that the U.S. can do to rectify the situation because if they could, they would have. So it is just, it is just, uh, it, it is a, obviously a tough thing. But um, nine, nine years uh, is what they're saying. They had asked for nine and a half. So the chat's saying max was 10. I don't know. So if she was not a pro athlete, would she have gotten the same? I don't know. Are they making an example of her? I don't know. Um, and if they are making an example of her, why? I don't know. So it's just, yep, it's it's just, that's what Russia's decided to do. We will see what happens from here. It sounds like the U.S. has offered a trade. We will see if that's taken up. So that is what happened this morning. And we can, well, as we get into our topics, uh, A, I knew I would probably see it pop up because it looks like this just happened. So I want to make sure that we, you know, there are times we address it. I've also, um, I've also gotten a lot of requests for covering the Alex Jones trial. I've seen you ask. Um, I have heard you ask. I am not covering that trial live. If I address it at all, which is a big if, I may address the wildness that went down with his attorney leaking things um, or leaking or seemingly potentially disclosing things. Here's what happened yesterday, to my knowledge. It seems that Alex Jones's attorney may have turned over text messages that weren't required to be turned over and then didn't try to seal them. And with that... I might talk about that aspect after this is over um, because I want to keep, I, I want to take a look at it a little more. So I might address the lawyering of it all. I might not. Uh, it's, it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild for sure. But I am not talking about that. Um, I am not talking about that case in, in the broader sense of the word. There is so much a backstory and B context to what's happening in court. I have not watched all of it. Um, and I find Alex Jones to be very polarizing. I don't particularly want to have to watch tons of his testimony just for my own, um, my own, just my own feelings. And it's, it's really, really hard to watch. I, I'm not going to watch his testimony in isolation, um, without watching the parents testimony. That is very, very difficult. And so if I cover it, that will be what I will talk about is the attorneys. Um, so that's that's where I'm at. But no, I'm not covering it. I I don't want to cover it. Um, yes, it is a, a penalty phase. Well, not a penalty phase. That's in criminal. It's a, you know, damages phase on a defamation case. But there is so much, there is so much surrounding it. And there's a lot of backstory to it that I don't have the backstory to, which makes it very difficult um, to jump into. And we have so many cases to get back to. So that's my choice at this. That's why I'm not um, I'm not live streaming it. I'm not live stream covering it. It's just, it's so much stuff. So thank you in the chat. If you guys want to go see coverage elsewhere of that trial, I absolutely understand it. If I address it, it's just the lawyers. And with that, we're moving on. We've got a lot of unsealed documents. So as we move on to the unsealed documents, we're all going to move on to the unsealed documents. But um, I wanted I wanted to tell you why. I've gotten a lot of questions like, why aren't you covering this? A, it's not really pop culture. It's not in my uh, preferred wheelhouse. 
And B, again, there is a lot there and the onboarding, the onboarding um, knowledge of it is substantial, is substantial. Um, Betta said here in Hungary, you face prison when you have even a small amount and they catch you one to five years with small amounts, five to 15 years with big amounts. And Russian is Russia is stricter. And that's, I mean, that is one of those things with, with traveling, knowing the laws of where you are going is, is a, is a part of it. And I think it's something we don't always think about, but it's also part of traveling between States in the U S too, especially with weed. The laws in each state in the U.S. are different. So there is there is some need to know. Um, but again, it's it's hard to look at nine years for a mistake. That's not what would happen would happen here. But again, I also am not a geopolitical commentator. So I'm I'm, you know, it seems like a lot to me. Um, and that's where and that's where we leave it. But that has happened. We'll see what comes next. That looks like it w- just came down right before I went live. And we'll, again, we will see what happens. It's something that I'm tracking kind of external to streaming because. Um, the question from Brandeis was, she's a pro athlete. Why wouldn't her team captain at all educate the team about the laws? I don't I don't know what she knew, what she didn't knew, know. She said it was a mistake. And, um, and she said it was a mistake. So that's what it is. All right. Let us get into today's topic and oh, where did my notes go? Let me, and let me pull up my notes because I seem to have closed them when I pulled up everything else. Well, that Emily, that's not helpful when you close out all of your notes. We don't need to do that. So let us get into the, here's where I'm going to go first with this. We're going to do the devices first then look at the transcripts um, from the UK case and then kind of look at what the underlying arguments are for some of the motions in limine. So that's what it is. Um, Let us go to motions first. So we're looking at the DEP motion to compel and then the herd opposition. We're going to look at both. So thank you. And mods, thank you very much. I've seen the international crew weighing in. I appreciate it. Um, hello from Bulgaria. It's good to see you. Everybody let us know where they came in. Um, I was running a bit late. I don't even think I asked. So yeah, it's just, I don't even think I asked where you're coming in from and what you're drinking, but here we go with the, um, we're drinking the coffee and we are, we are coming in here from middle Tennessee, but now it is time to talk about the devices again with the devices. I never saw what happened at the end of this. I don't think there was ever time for Depp to do a digital examination of Amber Heard's physical devices. We saw it alluded to throughout the trial. We saw things bumping up in the trial against these devices and against metadata and stuff coming in and stuff not coming in. And <sighs> But we didn't see all of the motions. We saw one motion and I was like, whoa, this seems like a big deal. What are we doing? What are, What's happening with these devices? But we didn't get all of the motions. We got one thing. So now I hope that this is the rest. So let's talk about the DEP motion to compel an imaging of Herd's devices. I think this is a lot of the motion. No, this is not the motion that we went over before. This is a... This is the underlying motion, it seems. The motion that we went over included the motion for sanctions, which is a very interesting thing. So let's see. Mm. Are, is our screen ready to share? No. <laughs> why? Because we're professionals here. That's why. <laughs> of course it's not. All right. Let's go. This is filed February 18th, 2022. So again, when we're looking at doing a full forensic digital image of a device or multiple devices, and then have that sent out to be um, evaluated forensically, the trial started in April. February's not a lot of time. Hello, Johan. 
Johan Mohan from Singapore. Hello, hello. So this is not a lot of time. This is already coming down to the wire. And the court's original order to turn these things over happened in November 2021. So now we're November, the court makes the order. December, January, we're now mid-February, and they still don't have it. And that's a very interesting thing. Plaintiff Depp's memorandum in support of motion to compel compliance with orders regarding forensic imaging and production of testing data expert documents for a limited expansion of order regarding forensic imaging for order compelling Mr. Depp's 4th, 9th, and 12th request for production and for order compelling response to Mr. Depp's 5th interrogatories. This gives you a hint of how much discovery was going on. For those of you that are newer to the chat, discovery is the process of turning information over between the parties back and forth. And it's governed by the court. And these parties seem to fight it out in the court in to the point that there was a uh, third party discovery referee. They call it a conciliator. There was a third party involved in helping these parties get the discovery turned over to each other. That's how this went. This needed mediation um, from a third party to get all of this turned around. So let's see. Um, forensic imaging of Herd's devices back on November 8th, 2021. So early in November. This is what's most important to me. The court ordered Miss Herd to produce her original devices, including mobile devices, computers, operating systems, drives, and cloud backups for forensic imaging. See Exhibit 1. Per the court's order, this forensic imaging was to take place, quote, no later than November 30th, 2021. Now, several months later, Ms. Hurd's compliance with the order remains woefully incomplete. The court ordered it. What have you done? Indeed, although some images have now finally been produced to a third-party conciliator for review, so that's their kind of discovery mediator, not a single document has yet been provided to Mr. Depp's experts. Hmm. Worse, Ms. Hurd's forensic expert has informed Mr. Depp's expert. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hurd's expert has informed Mr. Depp's expert that eight forensic images of Ms. Hurd's cloud accounts still need to be performed. That seems like a lot to me. That just, that seems like a lot to me. With trial rapidly approaching, it sure is, and the court-appointed third-party conciliator still needing to review the extracted materials following the forensic imaging before it even goes to Mr. Dex Depp's experts for a further time-consuming forensic review, Ms. Hurd's failure to comply with the order is severely prejudicial. Part of the third party, it seems, from this is that the third party is going to make sure that the things that get turned over to Depp are things that should properly turn over. So even if there's stuff in the phone dump or the forensic drive imaging that is sensitive, is private, is unrelated to this case, that won't get turned over. Just the things that relate. And there is a third person, a third party in charge of making those determinations, which also is going to be time consuming. They say Ms. Hurd should be directly and immediately, uh, Ms. Hurd should be directed to immediately comply with the order. Mr. Depp further requests a very limited expansion of the court's November 8th, 2021 order which was limited to production of photographs of Ms. Heard during the time periods of the alleged abuse, Depp requests that the court expand the scope of the order to include the following. Hmm. First, any text communications between Heard and Stephen Duders on May 24th, 2014, or May 25th, 2014. So May 24th and 25th in 2014. Despite having previously imaged Mr. Duders' phone, Mr. Depp has been unable to locate a series of text messages between Heard and Deuters following the quote-unquote Boston plane incident that Miss Heard has produced. Strangely, the texts produced by Miss Heard are in a different format than all other texts she produced. The veracity of these text messages is critical and subject to serious question. Interesting. So we've heard a lot about these text messages. Chad, do you remember these texts? We've heard a lot about these texts. Um, these are the texts that Amber Heard's attorneys brought up or 
Elaine, not Amber Heard's attorneys, the one attorney, Amber Heard's attorney, Elaine, brought up to, um, to I don't remember which interview it was. It might have been both. Talking about the Stephen Deuters texts. We've heard about these texts, not in the trial. We've heard about these texts outside of the trial where Amber Heard's team has said, look, Stephen Deuters texted Amber Heard and said something to the effect of when I told him what happened on the plane or when I told him that he kicked you on the plane, something that when I told him what happened or when I told him he kicked you, he cried um, and and said either he was sorry or or something of contrition to the best of my memory. What Johnny Depp's team is alleging here is that they've searched Deuters' phone and seen no corresponding text messages and that they are asking for Amber Heard's imaging because the text produced were in a different format. So they're clearly questioning the veracity of this text message, um, which is fair. And I think they, well, they could have brought Stephen Deuters in and didn't, but I think that they didn't win on this one because that Deuters text never came in. But Amber Heard's attorneys have posited it in the news as that this is a, I don't know, this is kind of a bellwether moment for them. If this text had come in, then this. If this text had come in, then this. Well, if that text was produced in a different form and there are questions of veracity, it might have been evidentially proper for the court to keep that text message out or reference to it because Amber Heard can't testify to what she was told by Stephen Deuters. That's hearsay. So if Amber Heard is going to testify about this text, Stephen Deuters would also have to text. Well, they didn't testify, so we don't know. So that's interesting because it's been, well, it's been, it's been relayed by Heard's team as something other than this, where there is absolutely a question of veracity here. Hmm. Second, an audio recording purporting to be of the May 24, 24, mm, May 24, 2014 flight from Boston to LA, the veracity of which is also in question. I wonder if that's the audio of um, Johnny Depp. How did they describe it as wailing or, or moaning? It's interesting that they had questions about when that audio recording was from, because when that was played during the trial, a lot of you in the chat asked if that was audio from him detoxing or if that was audio from the plane, or if that was from that plane ride. And they never really tied it back to a date. Like it was always weird to me um, that they never tied it back to a date. Third, any text communications between Amber Heard and Aaron Borum between, and I believe that is the nurse to the best of my memory, between March 7th, 2015 and March 9th of the same year, Miss Borum is, oh, there we go. I believe this is the um, Aaron Filotti. One is a married name. One is prior to the married name. So there was a change in name in there somewhere. Miss um, Borum is a nurse whose text, whose notes reflect text messages with Miss Heard during the critical time period of the Australia incident, none of which have ever been produced. Well, we've heard nothing about those texts. Finally, any audio video recordings that include Mr. Depp Anner or Miss Heard from the Toronto Film Festival approximately September 10th to September 5th to September 16th, 2015. At minimum, if the court declines to order an expansion of the order, Mr. Depp requests that Miss Heard be directed to immediately produce native copies of those documents. Okay. Notes and test data of Ms. Heard's mental health expert, despite being under court order to provide the data. That's a regular part of production. Um, to provide the data and documents relied upon by our experts, Heard is yet to produce any notes taken by our expert, Dr. Hughes, during her testing examinations of Heard, nor has she produced raw test results for the CAPS-5 test uh, administered December 27th, 2021. 
which was only disclosed in Ms. Heard's second supplemental expert disclosure served on February 11th. So, hey, this is over a month old and you haven't disclosed it yet. Uh, despite the fact that testing was supposedly conducted prior to the service of Ms. Heard's supplemental expert disclosures on January 11th, Depp's experts needs the notes for her rebuttal opinion. And this goes back and forth with the battle of the experts. Let's see what this ninth request for production is. Um, Ms. Heard, they say, has unreasonably refused to produce a number of critical documents in response to the ninth request for production. That's a lot of requests for productions. Yikes. For instance, request one through three seek communications between Heard and any other person regarding drafting, content, purpose, and meaning of the op-ed. The relevance of these documents is clear as the op-ed is the focal point of this complaint for defamation. Heard is inappropriately limited the temporal scope of her response, footnote one. In asserting the defense of advice of counsel, Ms. Heard has also waived any claims of privilege as to her communication with her then attorneys about the op-ed the court has previously recognized. Interesting, because Amber Heard um, backed away from that defense. And I'm going to answer Pam's question because I saw it in the chat and it matters. Um, and chat, yes, I'll put the document bigger. Sorry, I keep forgetting to switch between the two. But Pam, this is a good question. It's not, it's a good question. Do these unsealed documents relate to the appeal process? That's a yes and no, because the rulings made on a lot of these things will relate to the appeal. But these were not unsealed for the public because of the appeal. What we saw from the transcript from the hearing on June 24th is that the court unsealed these because it was always their intention to unseal these documents because they were only sealed so that they wouldn't um, populate or taint the jury pool potentially because the reporters would report on these. And these are items, I mean, we see allusion to the Deuters text, but that never came in at trial. So you want to make sure that the jury is not hearing about these things in the media prior to trial. And so part of the way you do that is by sealing these documents, especially things that are dealing with stuff that might not come in. Like if if Amber Heard ended up not putting her mental health um, in issue in this case, as we talked about on Tuesday, then all of this discussion about diagnoses, doctors and testing really shouldn't be made public. You know, that stuff that can be protected, but it all came in in trial. So as they're broadly unsealing these documents, it's because they were never intended to be sealed um, for all time. They were always intended to be sealed to protect the jury. But a lot of the things that are ruled on that were brought up in these documents are going to be the subject of the appeal. Part of why I wanted to go over all of this is because when we get to the appeal, it gives us a bit more context about what happened because we get to see um, we get to see the back and forth of the um, of the motion work before this came up. If that makes sense, Lady Witch is asking, "Can we get the voice changer for reading the documents?" Right now, I can't hear the voice changer in my ear, so it's very hard to use because I can't. Hear Hear it. So, sorry, I'm trying to fix it. I could hear it and now I can't. So, maybe a little bit towards the end of stream, but let us continue on with this document. It's very much interesting backstory for what is likely to come in the appeal, and it gives us more context for what we're likely to see in the appeal, I think. All right. Many requests for mirror images of discovery heard is already obtained from Depp. Request four seeks documents relied on by Heard's experts. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Look, in asserting the defense of advice of counsel, Heard also waived any claims of privilege as to her communications. She didn't end up going that route, though. And I thought that she would. And I don't know if that was a strategic call because of some of these discovery things or if the court limited her because of some of these discovery things. Because the defensive advice of counsel I was expecting from Amber Heard would go something like this. Look, 
We went to the ACLU. Their lawyers looked at it. I went to my defamation lawyer. They looked at it. It came up, but they didn't tie it round back to Amber Heard can't have the malicious intent in this op-ed because she was relying on her attorney and her attorney told her it was not malicious. Therefore, there is no malice. But they never really tied that back around, and I'm not sure why they didn't tie it back around. Will we see that throughout this? Maybe, maybe not. Anna says Judge A wasn't the pretrial judge. Partly true. Judge A was not the pretrial judge for the entire pretrial, but Judge A was the pretrial judge for quite a lot of this. Judge A made the ruling about the UK ruling, but this case went on for years pretrial, and the former site judge or the former presiding judge, Judge White, was form I believe it's Judge White, was formerly the presiding judge or the site judge or the the um lead judge of the courthouse previously. And when that judge changed out and the new and Judge A became the presiding judge of this courthouse, she kept this case. So she ended up um, being the one kind of in charge of some of this. So let us continue on. To put a pin in it, I was surprised she didn't rely on the defense of counsel or advice of counsel more. Hmm. Many requests for mirror images of discovery Miss Heard has already obtained. Great. Um, let's see. Basic discovery that's already been ordered against Depp. Request six seeks copies of all publications evidencing or reflecting Heard's reputation. So this is more discovery not related to the documents. This is discovery related to, it seems like her um her DV, the DVRO, the DV um temporary domestic violence restraining order. The career prospects, non-privileged communications from any person regarding the publication of the op-ed. So this is all other underlying discovery. Request 14 seeks documents sufficient to reflect all loans, benefits, perks, expenses, or payments in excess of $5,000 in cash or value made by Ms. Heard from May 21st, 2016 to the present to the witnesses identified by the parties in the case. Ah, has there been any, any financial interest between Miss Heard and the other witnesses in the case. This is relevant to exploring bias. Um, request 21 seeks communications between Miss Heard and any witnesses in the UK action regarding testimony in the UK action, Depp's allegations of abuse against Heard, Heard's allegations of abuse against Depp. The relevance of these documents is obvious. So these are all, hey, continue to turn things over. I am most interested in the devices for our purposes. So when we're talking about interrogatories, all of you were like, we just covered this in the Britney Spears case. Yes. In yesterday's podcast, we just covered interrogatories in the Britney Spears case, which are questions signed under oath. Let's see. Heard is also resisting discovery in Depp's 12th request for production. Requests one through eight simply seek documents that support Heard's responses to Depp's Fourth and fifth interrogatories. Yes, someone has to keep this all organized. It's so much. They are seeking additional information regarding answers that she's already given. Uh, regarding what? What's the topic? Mm. Des let's see. Describe in detail each and every incident during which you contended that you suffered any form of violence or abuse at the hands of Mr. Depp. I, I can't imagine they don't have that. What more did they want? Um... The, these document requests should not be controversial. They probably think they already gave it to you, seeing how much this has been litigated, I would imagine. Request 14 and 15 seek communications between Heard and her employees regarding negative publicity surrounding the Sun case and this case. Heard contends that she suffered serious reputational and career harm from three isolated statements made by Adam Waldman. This is why you don't bring the counterclaim, because uh, then none of this is relevant. Depp is entitled to explore communications with her employees about publicity from these litigations and determine whether these isolated statements were materially reflective to the ocean of publicity surrounding these actions. I mean, fair request for productions. And then this is 197 pages long, but we have the order, which I'm very interested in always. 
Let's see what the court order that they turned over back in, this should be no, the November order, I think. November 8th. This is the actual underlying order regarding the devices. Oh, there's so much discovery in this case. All right. Upon consideration of Depp's motion to compel Heard to produce original devices and operating system drives and cloud backups of these original devices as requested in plaintiff's seventh set of requests for production and Ms. Heard's cross motion to compel Mr. Depp's production of forensic evidence and for sanctions, the oppositions thereto, arguments of counsel, and being fully advised, it is the 8th day of November, hereby ordered as follows. These are all the orders. Defendant's motion is denied, except Mr. Depp shall produce any native files with metadata of photographs reflecting injuries and audio and video recordings of Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Oh, so there were two motions. Uh... Oh, that's what I missed. Okay. Upon consideration of Depp's motion to compel Heard um, to produce all the originals and where is Heard's motion and Heard's motion to compel Depp's production of forensic evidence. So there were two motions going thus, thus. Heard's motion is denied except that Depp shall produce any native files with metadata of photographs reflecting injuries and audio and video recordings of Depp and Heard that are in Depp's possession. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see. That are, that are in Depp's possession and that have been previously produced in Discovery without metadata. So if you've turned anything over with metadata, then... You, you know, or without metadata, turn it over with the metadata. Plaintiff's motion is granted in part and denied in part. So this is Depp's motion. Defendant Heard shall produce her original devices, including mobile devices and computers, including laptops and iPads, as well as operating system drives, cloud backups of these original devices, quote, the requested material, for purposes of performing a physical image um, or physical imaging of all data from the original devices as requested in plaintiff's seventh set of requests for productions. For purpose of clarification, Ms. Heard's original devices shall include all devices on which the data was taken or originated or have been maintained. So not just necessarily the phone you took the picture with, but if it's maintained on another phone, phone then that too. As requested in the seventh set of production, including but not limited to current devices and all cloud backups. Oh, the imaging of devices under the supervision of Mr. Depp's retained forensic expert, Brian Neumeister and or Mr. Neumeister's colleague, Matt Erickson, either in person or over Zoom or equivalent, Heard's designated forensic expert shall perform forensic imaging of the requested material on a date agreeable to the parties no later than November 30th, 2021. So this motion is from February. As of November, what they were supposed to get according to the court order was the devices and imaging of the devices. And I think this talks about how much these attorneys were at odds when the court said the experts for Depp are to be on Zoom or some other way that they can see it, while the experts for Heard are creating the imaging. Like, everyone needs to be in the room where it happens, or at least virtually. Wow. So, room where it happens, or at least virtual room where it happens, we need, we need these devices to be imaged an image, a forensic imaging is not just like a download from a device that you turn over. A forensic image is a specific thing, a very specific thing. And to the point where normally you would get, um, you would get just the handover 
from one expert to another expert of the image drive. But it seemed that this has already gotten so far afield that they actually ordered that all of the experts be able to at least see each other while this is going on. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. Let us continue. The court had to get granular on how the devices will be imaged. Under the supervision. So this is ordered to happen. Let's see. This is ordered to happen by November 30th, which it just said. There it is. Under the supervision of DEPS experts, HERDS experts will make the forensic image of the requested stuff by November 30th in the following manner. Judge A had to go in a granular way of this is how it has to be done. For computers, laptops, and desktops, a right-blocked raw DD non-segmented forensic image shall be taken of each original computer drive. For mobile devices, cell phones, and tablets, her shall provide the passwords for the devices she used during the relevant time period so that the data can be accessed in the check M8, check, I don't know, IN, extraction shall be performed where possible for each cell phone. For the cloud accounts, iCloud, Gmail, etc., Ms. Heard shall provide her username and passwords and extract using an extraction using oxygen or Cellbrite. Cellbrite's really commonly used, um, and I'm more familiar with Cellbrite than oxygen. Anyway, an extraction using Cellbrite or oxygen software shall be performed. When you see this much detail in this, it's just, you know how, how bad this has gotten when the judge has to be like, do this, do this, do this, do this. You guys are like, checkmate, check rain. Thank you. M8 equals mate. All right, perfect. Chat, you're much wiser than I am. So let's see. I told you there are things. These are things that I do not do. Forensic imaging? Nope. If Ms. Hurd's designated forensic experts do not have access to the hardware or software required to conduct the imaging described above, DEPS expert will make arrangements with HERDS experts in the event that a dispute arises between HERDS expert and DEPS experts related to the manner in which the images are to be performed. The court appointed conciliator will resolve the dispute. <sighs> Man. Not only is the judge saying step by step, this is how you have to provide these images. And it has to be done with all of the experts looking. It has to use this particular software. It has to be done in this method and manner. And if you still can't do it, then the court appointed third party has to have you, has to resolve any disputes. This is such a detailed ruling on this. Normally, these types of rulings are turn over the forensic image. This is like how you image it, when you image it, who's a party to the imaging, because it matters so much in this case. I still don't know if this ever happened. Because what we saw in March, jumping ahead, narrator voice. I don't know. What's my narrator voice? I still can't hear it, but we're going to try it. But in March... They were still asking for sanctions over this not happening. <sighs> the extraction of relevant data after the requested material is imaged, Ms. Hurd's designated expert, also under supervision of DEPS experts, shall extract the following categories of relevant data for review and analysis. <sighs> Photographs of Hurd. All photographs of her taken during the following time periods, which correspond to dates in which her alleges Mr. Depp abused her. And then they give all of the date time periods to be searched. These are very, very specific time periods. Okay. Deleted photographs. All deleted photographs of her taken during the time periods outlined in the second column of the table. This one. 
only the extracted data as opposed to the forensic forensic image can be and will be reviewed by anyone at this time. Hmm. That's interesting. So what the court is saying is that, oh, I didn't make this bigger. These are the list of dates. What the court is saying that you will only, you will not look at the forensic image. You will only make sure that the extraction happened properly. You're not getting into the what's in it. You just need to see that it was done. Okay. Let's see. Once the extract, this is the most thorough court order on a discovery matter. Like what? Once the extraction is complete, Craig B. Young, who probably doesn't feel very young after this case is done because good God, the court appointed limited discovery issue conciliator. Wait, there's two? Is this a different name than the name up above? Has my coffee not kicked in yet? There was another conciliator named up here. Hold on. There's an Stephen Cochran's the other. There's more than one. There's more than the parties are paying the conciliators. There's more than one referee to deal with this discovery. Wow. So the court conciliator up here named above, no wonder they didn't just call them the court appointed conciliator because there's more than one. So Stephen Cochran, the court appointed conciliator, was going to resolve the dispute over the manner the, the manner of the imaging and the manner of the extracting. But then, but wait, but then, Craig Young is the court appointed limited discovery issue conciliator who will act as a neutral third party attorney and will review the extracted data to identify and isolate any irrelevant or privileged information that will not be subject to the forensic analysis. So here's what has to happen. Heard has to turn over the devices. I don't know if that happened. All of the experts have to get together and image the devices. If they cannot agree on the manner of imaging, then the court appointed conciliator has to moderate that dispute and come up with a resolution. Then they have to all agree that the drives and the devices were imaged properly or extracted properly, not review the imaging, just that they were extracted properly. And then it has to go to an attorney third-party conciliator. And the attorney third-party conciliator has to review everything and take out conversations with lawyers, um, photos that are irrelevant, things that are private, that kind of stuff that isn't relevant to this case. Then it goes to be forensically analyzed by depth experts. This is why they're freaking out in February, because that's a lot of stuff that has to get done that isn't done yet by February. This is why in March, they were on red alert asking for sanctions and freaking out over this. They were like, red alert, red alert, red alert, red alert. We have to get this done. And now you see why. There is so much that needs to happen because it's not just that it needs to be extracted. It's not just that the extraction needs to not be fucked up so you can actually use the image. It's not just that the image then has to be forensically evaluated. It's that it has to go to the attorney and parsed through first. This is a ton of fucking work. I can understand why they're frustrated. I can, I can, I get it. Yikes. Let's see. At the same time, Ms. Hurd should also have the right to receive and review the extracted data for the purpose of reviewing extracted data for privilege and work product only. Any privilege extracted data identified by Mr. Young or Ms. Hurd will be isolated and will not be disclosed to or reviewed by anyone else, including the forensic expert, until the court makes a determination on the privilege or work product objections pursuant to the privilege protocol. So then it has to go to the court. And the court has to make evidentiary rulings on it. <gasps> oh, my God. 
This gives a lot more context to the freak out we saw in March. A lot more context. The relevant data from the extraction will, in the first instance, be treated as attorneys and experts' eyes only. Mr. Neumeister will conduct his analysis of the relevant data from the extraction for the party's attorneys and herds' experts will be permitted to review this set of data. Once both parties' attorneys have had an opportunity to review the data that Neumeister has will be analyzing, the data shall be redesignated or de-designated consistent with the operative protective order in this action. So then even after it's analyzed, it has to go back to court and the court has to rule on it again. And then they have to determine what is protected, what is confidential, and what can come in and what can't come in. Ms. Hurd's attorneys shall disclose to Mr. Depp's attorneys an uh, inventory of all previously imaged photographs, text messages, emails, and video, and audio recordings, the inventory by Bates stamp if produced, and in list form if not yes, yet produced. For each of Ms. Hurd's previously imaged inventory, Hurd's attorneys shall disclose to Depp's attorneys and Neumeister the following information related to the inventory. So if things have been turned over... For computers and laptops, what type of forensic image was created? What software and version of the software was used to create the image? What make type of write blocker was used to create the image? Was an uncompressed write blocked forensic image extracted? And whether a hash verification was completed for each file and for the forensic image as a whole? This definitely came up in trial because we heard about the hash verifications and what hashed and what didn't hash. I imagine that the jury was just like, what? Like, is it smothered hash? Like, what are we, are we talking like hash browns? Like, what are we? <laughs> because by that time at the trial that we had gotten to whether files were hashing or not, I think all of us were a little glossed over. It was like, ah. And they went through it. Here's the thing that attorneys can struggle with. They went through it at a very high level. And I don't think they distilled it because the attorneys have been dealing with this for months and months and months. And their experts have dealt with it. So it was, they were on the same page. I don't know when it came to the digital, if they did a great job of pulling the jury in so everyone was on the same page. I think the most, um, I think that one of the most impactful demonstrations for both sides is when they took the pictures next to each other and were like, look at these two next to each other. And they did it with a picture on a train with Depp. And then they did it with the um, picture that said it was taken at different times. It looked like it was taken at the exact same time and then shown to be taken at the exact same time. For mobile devices, what type of extraction were performed? Whether a jailbreak method was used in the extraction process? What iOS was on the phone? What software make and version were used for the extractions? For the cloud accounts, whether a forensic analysis was conducted? And if so, what software was used? Um, let's see. I got coffee on my hand. Upon review of inventory by Mr. Depp's attorneys and Newmeister, Newmeister together with Depp's attorneys may decide to have Newmeister conduct an independent forensic image of any previously imaged inventory in the same manner as described above. So if they get stuff that was imaged by herd, and they're like, here's the image. We made it for you. They had the right to say no. We're going to image it the way that the court described above. The thing is, this was ordered November 8th. This motion is coming in February. We saw a second motion in March. They just don't have time. This is like the Titanic heading towards an iceberg. There's no time to turn the ship around at this point. The, the, the shit is well out the horse to have time to do. This is months of work. And there aren't months left before trial. Oh, boy. Declaration of Brian Neumeister. Let's see. This declaration is from, let's look at the date down here, 18th of February. Let's see if he tells us what they've gotten turned over. Um, resume, resume. The court order deadline for completion of the forensic imaging was November 30th. To date, some forensic imaging of Hertz devices has occurred, but no photographs have been produced for my review. Hmm. On or about February 11th, 2022, my colleague received a communication from Tyler Swasey, one of Hurd's experts, colleagues, in which 
Swasi stated that there are still eight to 10 forensic images of backup files from Herd's iCloud that need to be parsed. Analyzing this data is a time consuming process. It's, it, yeah, y yeah, it would seem to be. Analyzing this data is a time consuming process, and the delay has already rendered it extremely difficult to complete the analysis before trial. Further delay will further increase the difficulty in doing so. But it feels like maybe that's where we're at. I'm very interested to see the objection to this because Herd's team objects, and I want to see their side of this. Exhibit three filed under seal. Declaration of Shannon Curry. Ah. Oh. Um, Marianne, question. Sorry, don't ever apologize for a question. It's okay, just ask them. Not a techie, what is jailbreak of data? So they're asking if the phone had to be forced open by a software device instead of giving the username and password. So how did you how did you access this? Did you access this by software, by forcing it, by cracking it? Or did you access it by username and password? That's a really, really generalized explanation of jailbreaking. Chat, you are welcome to explain it better. Some of you absolutely, undoubtedly will. So this is Dr. Curry. Resume, resume, resume. On October 1st, 2021, Hughes was ordered to provide me with the raw data, emphasis added, collected during her examination of her on November uh, by November 15th. On January 25th, the court ordered the production of all documents relied on by Dr. Don Hughes in providing any opinions in the case, including anything to support the basis for such opinions. Dr. Hughes has not provided me with complete data from her evaluation of Ms. Heard to date. I have only received the test scores from Dr. Hughes's examination of Heard on September 26, 2019. Hughes's supplemental designation report dated January 11th, 2022 indicates that Dr. Hughes met with Heard four more times after that date. Furthermore, Dr. Hughes Dr. Hughes's report indicates that her opinions were derived from multiple sources of additional information, including record review, clinical interview of Ms. Hurd, and collateral interviews with Ms. Hurd's mother and treating providers. However, I have not yet received the raw notes related to these critical components of the evaluation. So Dr. Hughes is submitting a, a declaration saying, hey, this backs up what's in the motion. I don't have all the data. In her second supplemental designated report, Hughes indicated that she met with Ms. Heard for a sixth time on December 27th, 2021, more than two years after the initial date of the examination, during which she administered a new test, the CAPS-5. This came up in trial. Dr. Hughes has not provided me with the data from this test. October on December 3rd, 2021, I emailed Dr. Hughes. Oh, I would love to see that email chain. <laughs> what do you think is going on in that email chain? On December 3rd, I emailed Hughes requesting the remainder of her test data, including raw notes from her semi-structured clinical interview of Ms. Hurd and collateral interviews with Ms. Hurd's mother and treating providers. On December 4th, 2021, Hughes replied she was instructed to provide only the psychological test data as per their agreement. Whose agreement? This just harkens back to Dr. Spiegel saying, I was told it was vomitous. <sighs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She was instructed by who? Who instructed Dr. Hughes not to turn over everything? Face palm. Withholding data in a forensic context is inconsistent with the principle of transparency, which is enumerated throughout extensive bodies of professional literature. In addition, the APA's ethical principles of psychologist code of conduct define test data as the following and then goes to define it. So these two experts were fighting behind the scenes. Yikes. Yikes. Let's see. Uh, the S, uh, they went into the other guidelines with regarding discovery request. They are arguing, look, this is appropriate. Exhibit four. Uh, defendant and counterclaimant plaintiff Amber Heard's objections and responses to plaintiff's. Okay, these are objections to the request for discovery. We are going to go past those because I'm going to look at Amber Heard's um, objections to this. 
set. I'm not going to look at their objections to that set unless it relates to the raw documents in that court order. But that court order is pretty definitive back there in November. So these are all of Herd's objections. Um, let's see if we can get through these objections. All right. That's the end of those. Let's see. Who signed these? Not Amber Hurt, not uh, Elaine Bradhoff, David E. Murphy. No idea which attorney on the team that one is. More objections to requests for productions. I'm going to make this small as I scroll. Um, let's see. Defendant and counterclaim plaintiffs objections to the fifth set of interrogatories. So they're attaching for the court all the objections to the sets of interrogatories. And... Defendant counterclaim plaintiffs' objections to the 12th set of requests for production. I am trying, again, to get out of these objections because we're going to see a lot of that put into, a lot of these are form, but we're going to see it put into the response that we're going to get to next. And I would rather see the response in their argumentative format the way we've covered this versus just their form objections. Next is defendant counterclaim plaintiffs' objections to the 12th set of responses Quest for productions. Great. More, more, more. Um, I see a lot of you in the chat asking, why are they fighting this? Because they can. I mean, fighting over discovery is part of legal strategy. Um, and if the court's not going to do anything about it, which I don't know if the court ever did anything about it, I think they, I think Team Heard gained an advantage by being like, yeah, we'll get it to you when we get it to you. The court said, turn it over. And they were like, mm. and what do we know if the court did anything? No. But did it, was there a potential advantage there for Team Heard potentially? The thing that's frustrating for me is that if they had gained an advantage and we're like, well, we didn't turn stuff over. Okay, fine. Gain your advantage. This, this is zealous advocacy. Do you. If the court's not going to sanction you and the court's not going to bar evidence from coming in, is that within the scope of your representation? Probably. But when we get to the mediator and she's saying, my stuff didn't come in, this text message didn't come in, it looks like you didn't turn over the underlying shit, though. So it's, it's, the court kept it out for what purpose? Well, the veracity is in question. So it might have been Team Herd's own fault that that didn't come in if they didn't turn it over. And the court was like, look, it doesn't come in. We don't have the underlying data. I mean, it's also hearsay. Um, so, I mean, frustrating though it is, I understand. I can understand if the court is not going to be like, I'm sanctioning everybody, fuck it. This is gaming the system. This is why you have lawyers, because this is what they do. And clients will pick lawyers to do this for them. Let's see. These are more objections. I'm going to keep this small as we zoom through these. I'm going to see if there's anything else, because we are almost out of this. If these are all just their objections to request for productions, again, I could repeat myself more, but we'll get to it. Yes, we have... Fred is, well, fretting in the background. All right, Fred. It's bath time back there, apparently. Oh, uh, let's see. Plaintiff Depp's fourth set of interrogatories to defendant Amber Heard. So again, these are going to be those questions under oath. Questions under oath are things like, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to one of them. These are just the instructions. Oh, it's very brief. Describe in detail each and every incident during which you contend that you suffer from any form of violence or abuse, identify all persons with firsthand knowledge. These are all standard. These, those are standard requests. Describe in detail each and every injury you contend you received. Identify all persons to have firsthand knowledge of any injuries you received. Standard interrogatories. All right. Now let's get on. We're done. We're done. We're done. So you guys talking about the cats. Fred is normally the one in the background. George is under my monitor in front of me. Um, Deli Moo said, why wouldn't she want her mountains of evidence in? I think she wanted them in in the way that she wanted them in. And the court was like, we're going to need all that underlying data. 
I don't think this was ever turned over because of March. They, as of March, they were still fighting over it. And what we heard is the experts saying, well, these didn't hash. I didn't have access to this. And we heard a number of the experts saying, I didn't have access to the devices. So from that testimony, I am assuming and presuming this is me assuming that when those experts are saying they didn't have that, uh, those devices, it's because they weren't turned over, even though there were court orders to turn them over. That's my, that's my educated guess on that. But again, we don't have anything to point to that other than what the experts said under oath. All right, Heard's opposition to this. Let's go look at what they said in their opposition to the motion. I'm I'm glad we at least get both sides of these. Sometimes it's so much easier to look at these when you have both Herd's Herd's team is saying this, Depp's team is saying this, and we can look at it close in time instead of scattered out. It's just so helpful. So I'm going to swoop. This is now Herd's objection or Herd's opposition to the motion we just covered from Johnny Depp. So it's a good place for us to timestamp this so we get to Herd's opposition to the motion to compel forensic imaging. Swoop. I don't know why I didn't hear that either. Oh, well. Can we hear things today? No. All righty. Defendant and counterclaim plaintiff Amber Heard's uh, opposition to plaintiff and counterclaim defendant's motion to compel further forensic imaging and production of testing data, quote, expert slash expert documents. An expansion of order regarding forensic imaging, Mr. Depp's fourth, ninth, and twelfth request for production, and fifth interrogatories. Oh my God, it's so much discovery. It's so much discovery. Ms. Hurd has complied with this court's order regarding imaging. See, they're like, we did it already. All right, let's see. What did you do? Let's find out. This is why we look at both. Ms. Hurd has complied with every step of this court's November 8th order, and any delays are solely the fault of Mr. Depp's team. We did it. Y'all didn't do it. Once the order was issued, counsel for Ms. Hurd provided the inventory list that was ordered and on November 19th began suggesting that both sides forensic experts schedule a call to discuss the next procedures under the order. Depp's team ignored that email and two follow-up emails. Oh, I wonder if they're uh, attachment one. Oh, more emails. Great. Mr. Depp's counsel finally responded that their experts were not available for a call until December 7th. That's a month later. That's not good. Our expert grabbed the first date because he is anxious to get this moving. On the call, Depp's expert explained, uh, complained of a very heavy caseload and scheduled the extraction, which they wanted to complete in person rather than by Zoom for early January. Inter See, information we didn't get on Depp's motion. They had a month to schedule a call and didn't. That order was made November 8th. I don't doubt they have a heavy caseload. But if you're, complain if you're complaining, Depp, about not having enough time, you can't wait a month to schedule a call. So this is a great question, um, Neo, I was going to say Angie, and that's definitely not Angie. <laughs> Ogni, isn't refusal to turn over everything a violation of the Brady rule? This is why this is a great question. Brady applies in criminal cases, and this is a civil case. So you can be you can be sanctioned by the court for not following the court's orders, but the discovery violations are not of a constitutional level the way they are in criminal cases. The rights are different. Um, and the Constitution governs those two cases differently. So Brady violations are criminal only. So thank you for asking so I could bring that up. Thank you. All right. Let us. And those are generally Brady also adheres to the government. So to the state, to the prosecuting agency, which is why discovery in criminal is generally easier. There are 
you know, protective orders over limited amounts of information to protect victims' identities, sometimes to protect witnesses, sometimes to protect addresses and those sorts of things. And then generally everything else gets turned over. And it's something prosecutors should take very seriously. Mo most do. But occasionally you see Brady violations and you're like, what in the ever loving is going on here? Because those are things that are just turn it over. Just turn it over. And not hard. There's a lot more that goes into the legal strategy of turning things over in civil. And there's a lot more room for parsing. I don't want to say gamesmanship, but for strategic parsing of information. So let us continue on. So heard saying, look, you waited a month to schedule a call. Then you wanted to complete it in person rather than by Zoom. The court allowed for Zoom. And then you wait another month till early January. Because of COVID, Depp's team moved the extraction process back another week into January. You could have just done it by Zoom, though. It then took Mr. Depp's team a week to respond to questions on the process. Despite these roadblocks by Depp's team, as of the date of this filing, virtually all the photographs have been provided to Mr. Young for review. The conciliator. Notice they didn't, notice they didn't say all. I wonder what virtually all means. How many of all, if you have 10, that's a number I'm picking out of my brain. If you say 10, how many is virtually all? Five? Is half virtually all? Eight? Nine? How much is virtually all? I have a question. Oh, wait, they're going to tell us. Okay, great. Um, as of the date of this filing, virtually all the photographs have been provided to Mr. Young for review and will be produced by the time of the hearing on this matter. Mr. Young has finished viewing over 8,600 images and 5,200 images have been provided to Depp's team as the process continues. Interesting that... Depp's expert says they've gotten none. So where are the images getting lost? They say we've provided over 5,000 images to Depp's team. And Depp's team is saying we have not gotten the images that we're looking for. The question is, what images are these? And what are they images of? Because if they're images of like the dog um, or a house, like if they're just images or a selfie on a date where she doesn't have or has alleged injury, then they're not helpful. I need more information. Okay. Depp is seeking reconsideration of the November 9th order. Was it 9th? I thought it was 8th. Was it 8th? I thought it was 8th. Well, uh, I'm going to let it go. I thought it was 8th. They're saying 9th. Whatever. The court explicitly rejected what Mr. Depp now seeks, imaging of Ms. Hurd's devices for emails, texts, audio, and video. I'm, uh, I'm going to grant it in part and deny it in part, and there's actually going to be two parts to my ruling. I do believe that it is narrowly tailored, and there's a nexus for the photographs, but not for videos, texts, or emails. I need the context of that. Mr. Depp has added nothing to justify the reconsideration of this court's order while he's asking to expand it. But mere skepticism and mere desire to check that the opposition has been forthright and its discovery responses are not sufficient reasons to warrant drastic discovery measures like an exhaustive computer forensic examination and they cite case law uh, coming out of... I don't know what jurisdiction that's coming out of because of the Lexus site... Um, also, as to the Duder's text, Mr. Depp attempted to pull the same stunt during the divorce proceedings, alleging skepticism. Yet a forensic expert has already authenticated those texts. Who? The court was correct in its earlier ruling, and there's no basis for the court can reconsider. Ms. Hurtis produced documents Dr. Hughes relied on for her opinion. Ironically, Mr. Depp did not for Dr. Curry. We've gotten back into I know you are, but what am I? We've provided it. You haven't. And then this gets into the other communications and the op-ed communications. Mr. Depp seeks all communications with anybody about the op-ed. Ms. Hurt has produced all of her communications with her counsel and the ACLU regarding the drafting content purpose or meaning of the op-ed. 
Counsel for Depp has also previously informed this court that he was not seeking, quote unquote, all communications between Ms. Hurd and Mr. George while he was acting as her counsel after Mr. Depp filed this complaint. And that, quote, the temporal period of that is going to be the time before she published the op-ed. Therefore, admitting that communications following the publication of the op-ed are not relevant. I agree with that. They're not. Because if you're looking at if you're looking at the strategy or if you're looking at her saying, I relied on counsel, then you get that time period. What happened after is actually irrelevant. But I didn't think they were trying to expand that. That's not how I read that. They clearly did. Nothing else that could fall under these requests are relevant, and these requests are broad, overly broad, unduly burdensome, and harassing and should be denied. So this is getting into all of those other discovery. I really just wanted to see what was going on with the data. Um, and this is their continued objections. And these objections are echoing what was attached. Overbroad, unduly burdensome, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, it's a short one. Well, it's not. It's 102 pages, but this is only six. Let's see the attachments. For the foregoing reasons, heard request that Mr. Depp's motion to compel be denied. We don't know what happened. Okay, let's see if we can get to the end of the email thread and work our way back up. December 2nd at 6.22.05 p.m. So they're having lots of conversations during this period of time. That's December 1st. Oh, boy. This is November 29th. All right. This is November 24th. I'm saying them out loud, so I will keep track of where we're at in time. This is January 24th. Okay, so we need to start here and go back up. Let's see. To Camille, to Camille Vasquez, CC everybody from Elaine Bredehoff, Friday, November 19th, 2021 at 2.42 p.m. Camille. I wonder if Camille was dealing with all the tech stuff. Because it seems like during the same period of time or soon thereafter, the same period of time, they are dealing with the deposition and the procedures for the deposition. Camille, this follows our discussion earlier today in connection with the electronic issues in the court's order. We expect to be able to provide an inventory list early next week. Our expert, uh, Julian Eckert, and I think that's who testified, suggest that he and your expert schedule a call and discuss the best way to schedule the next procedure is under the court order. Fair and reasonable. Since Thanksgiving is next week, we recognize it may be more difficult to schedule that call. So you are going, so you are going to check with your experts to try to determine their availability next week and the following week for a call. The experts can then agree on a schedule for their review. Well, the court's order, this is November 19th. This is 10 days after the court's order. Uh, with respect to paragraph one of the court's order. You were, given, you were going to check with your experts on whether they would be involved in your providing all native files with metadata of photographs reflecting injuries and audio and video recordings of Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard that are in Mr. Depp's possession and have previously been produced in discovery without metadata. Thank you. What's interesting about this? Ah. My cat unplugged my internet. I don't know if I'm back. Hopefully we're back. My cat unplugged my internet. <laughs> the hazards of streaming with animals. This was a code George today. George! And he's like, what? <laughs> at least I can reach it from where I'm at to plug it back in. Oh my, oh my. Where were we? Oh, I had a thought and then my thought disappeared because... Because George. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. All right. Let's see. 
It's interesting because in the motion, Elaine Bredehoff is arguing that they don't need to pro- provide anything in addition, but then they are saying you need to make sure you're providing all the native files with metadata, photos, reflecting injuries, audio, video. So they're confirming, look, this is what the court said. Can we can we do it? And Elaine is, I mean, this is what, 10 days after the court's order, let's get them on a call. There's nothing about that that's unreasonable. It's reasonable. Reasonable. Amy K, I just saw your comment. Hold on, I'm pulling this up. Stuck in labor and delivery until we have the baby next week or the week after. My nurse just walked in and said, oh my God, is that Emily D. Baker? It was a happy moment. Hello to you and your nurse and best of luck. I definitely had a bit of time um, in labor and delivery before my, well, my my oldest was a whole situation, but was definitely there with the days before he was born. So I feel you. That's, I would, I would much prefer to not wait at the hospital. But those are stories for another day because we have a lot of documents to get through. Wednesday, November 24th at 1.39 p.m. That was the email from Elaine to Camille. Monday, November 29th at 11 a.m. from Elaine to Camille. Mm. Okay. Good morning, Camille. I'm following up on my earlier emails respecting obtaining dates and times for your experts to speak with ours. So this is what from Wednesday to Monday. Reasonable to be like, hey, hey, can you respond, please? I'm following up on my earlier emails respecting um, obtaining dates and times for your experts to speak with ours. As you may recall, the court order requires a number of exercises to be undertaken within both sets of experts. Yeah, by November 30th, this is November 29th. This is supposed to be done. Mm, as you may recall, the court requires a number of exercises to be undertaken with both sets of experts, so it's important to connect them so they can work out their schedules. The court order says by November 30th, but I am thinking since you have not been able to obtain dates thus far from your experts, for them to connect and schedule with our expert, we will be pushing beyond that because of the experts' schedules. Please let me know when you have a chance, a few dates and times, uh, your experts can be available to connect with Mr. Eckert, their expert. Also, to try to save more time and give your experts an opportunity to consider before the call, Eckert is proposing for the collection of Amber Heard's iCloud data, including any device backup stored on iCloud, using the collection tool um, Elcom Soft Phone Breaker version 9.71. That's exactly what they didn't want to use. I think they wanted to use Cellbrite. Um... Since your responses to the RFPs are due today and the court indicated she will be requiring the same for Mr. Depp as for Ms. Heard once we targeted more specifically with those RFPs, it might make sense for your experts to create an inventory like the one prepared by Eckhart, Ms. Heard's expert, and we, we know that by this point in the conversation, Elaine, and they can discuss the collection and imaging with Depp's devices as well. It will save us all time and expense as we move forward simultaneously. We will be happy to prepare a consent order to move that along. What's interesting is there is no response between Wednesday and Monday, November 29th, it seems, from Camille. Here's another email from Elaine that seems to be in the same thread from Wednesday, December 1st, so a week later, to Camille Vasquez and Ben. Camille and Ben, I'm once again following up on my earlier emails attempting to obtain dates and times for your experts to speak with ours to carry out the terms of the November 8th order. Well, it was November 8th. We would appreciate you providing us some dates and time so we can connect our experts with yours and try to, to talk and schedule. That's fair. Given your forensic experts appear to have a busy schedule and have been unable to find time to schedule time to talk and work with our experts for weeks now. And since these are the same experts both sides will be using for Mr. Depp's devices, I suggest we combine forces like the Thundercats and have them work on both in tandem so we can complete this process as quickly as possible. I think that's a fair suggestion. It's a it's a lot of it's a lot of a sentence, but I think that's fair. Can we just get this all done at the same time? With this in mind, we have drafted a consent order that tracks the order you prepared and Chief uh, Judge Ascarati entered on November eighth. I'm attaching for your review. I urge you to work with us to avoid having to file more motions, which they ended up doing. Well, Depp's team did, and also move this process along so the experts can work together. I think that's fair. 
As a reminder, at the October 29th hearing, the court denied Ms. Hurd's motion to compel forensic imaging of Mr. Depp's devices at this time due to a lack of specificity. Also during the meet and confer with Mr. Young, Mr. Young stated that once Mr. Depp's preferred forensic imaging protocol was in place, Mr. Young would not accept Mr. Depp complaining about a mirror image of his protocol once Ms. Hurd narrowed her forensic discovery RFPs to the level of specificity required by the court, as is reflected in the request for production, and then they lie out the request for production. Well, Mr. Depp has asserted the same boilerplate objections as in the past, so now she's just going in and was like, can we get this all done, please? And those are the requests for productions. And despite Mr. Depp's objections, Ben Chu argued to the court that, quote, if these are real photographs, she should want to be able to prove them, end quote. Therefore, Ben agrees that if Mr. Depp contends his photographs, video recordings, audio recordings are authentic, he, quote, should want to be able to prove them. Ah, using your words against you. That is all Ms. Hurd is seeking here exactly as Mr. Depp. For all these reasons, Ms. Hurd requests that the parties work together with their experts to accomplish the forensic discovery tasks, including Mr. Depp's agreement to the attached consent order. Why do you need a consent order? We are happy to discuss any aspect of the draft consent order. However, you will note that this is essentially your chosen language for the November 8th order. The November 8th order stands. So it would be difficult for you to claim something is unfair. <laughs> ah! If Mr. Depp will not agree to this consent order, Ms. Hurd will need to file a motion ASAP to obtain this forensic discovery. Since your experts have a busy schedule, we need to get these devices captured in a forensically sound manner. Yes, everyone does. Given the court's uh, invitation to rebring the motion with the required specificity, the ripeness for this motion and Mr. Young's comments regarding mutuality, Ms. Hurd is requesting permission from Steve Cochran, the conciliator, to notice a hearing on this motion for the first Friday in January that counsel for Mr. Depp is available. The court has the following Fridays available. Court dates. Anticipating anticipating that you may require us to refile our motion to compel rather than just agreeing to the consent order. I think she probably read that properly. I think she probably read that properly. <laughs> Seeing that we think you're not going to agree to us and you're going to make us litigate this further, please let us know what date you're available with. If you're not available January 7th, let us know if you're available after that. Finally, if you're not available those dates, please let us know if you're available at the very end of the month. We really need to move this along as quickly as possible to obtain this information. I don't disagree. I look forward from hearing for your experts on dates. It seems that they're not getting um, responses from Team Depp. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Camille Vasquez, Wednesday, December 1st at 9 9.42 p.m. Wednesday, December 1st, 10.55 a.m. Okay. Well, this this might be East Coast, West Coast. Camille does work on the East Coast. Regarding electronics issues and court order, request again for dates for experts to communicate and schedule request to enter into consent order regarding depths electronics. Have the experts work on both or dates for hearing if do not agree. That is the headline. Elaine. Our experts, Brian and Matt, are available Monday and Tuesday next week between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, two hours behind the East Coast, for a call with Mr. Eckert. Admittedly, I was surprised by your email this morning attaching a consent order <sighs> for the imaging of Mr. Depp's devices. We disagree with your conclusion that the court invited Ms. Hurd to seek the forensic imaging of Mr. Depp's devices. In fact, the court stated the following on the record in denying Hurd's motion. In this matter, as far as mutuality goes, because it's ordered in one case for one side, I'm going to deny the request at that time. There still has to be a nexus shown. It still has to be relevant and connected when you're asking for these types of items in discovery. And again, I do find that the ask is overbroad and there is no specificity to that emphasis added. They don't, they don't quite read what the court ruled the same way. As you are well aware, there is a procedure outlined in the consent order for appointment of a conciliator, which the parties must follow. The burden is on Ms. Hurd to first meet and confer with counsel and then seek Steve's guidance and permission to file a motion. 
from our perspective, any potential motion to compel by Ms. Heard is her 14th, 15th, 16th, or 17th request for reduction is not entitled to priority just because it relates to an order granting Depp's motion for forensic imaging. However, in the spirit of cooperation, we are amenable to folding this discussion into the meet and confirm Mr. Depp has been repeatedly requesting relating to his 9th, 10th, and 11th request for productions. Hey, we have a lot to talk about. Um, I suggest we get something on our calendars for this Friday or Monday. Please let us know when you are available and we will circulate a dial-in. Great. All right, let us continue. And you all, I know some of you are talking about these numbers. The numbers that are contained in the signature lines are generally the lawyer's publicly available information. But because they are publicly available, they are the lawyer's publicly available. Don't call the lawyers. Don't call the lawyers. Just don't call the lawyers. This is December 2nd, 6.22 p.m. Camille. Our expert will make Monday work. He is anxious to get this moving. Can you please send, and you can send just to me, the contact information for me to move forward, for me to forward to Julian so they can connect on their own and set this up. Steve requesting again. So Steve is looped into this email chain, requesting again for your consent to file our motion to compel in light of already having met and conferred. When did you do that? When did you do that? Yesterday? So... That's what that is. But these are publicly available numbers. Most attorneys have a work cell phone that is separate from a personal cell phone. So thank you all for being mindful. But that's why it's in the signature block. Let's see. What date is this? Monday, January 24th. Ah, this is the second part. Stephanie, in following up to my email responding to you yesterday, I have checked with Julian Eckhart, our IT expert. He is still waiting for a response from your IT experts to an email he sent last Wednesday with a substantive with substantive and procedural issues for the next steps. Perhaps you can check with them and see if they have time to respond. Thanks, Elaine. So it seems like these things are still not moving along. This is earlier Sunday, January 23rd at 4.20 p.m. Don't email on Sunday. Though I will say, running up to a trial, it is not unusual that attorneys would be conversing over the weekend, um, or at least sending things over the weekend, but it is also okay to have boundaries, but running up to a trial that happens. Stephanie, I understand our IT expert has been working proactively with your IT experts to try to work through this process. And your IT experts have had a number of scheduling problems, including a heavy workload and other matters and COVID, but we have continued to cooperate and try to move this along. Julian was waiting to hear back from your experts at the end of this past week, I will reach out to him Monday and see where they are. I also reached out to Craig Young to let him know we anticipate we are close to being able to turn over data for his review. We'll continue to cooperate. At least they're emailing back and forth. Sunday, January 23rd, um, from Stephanie over at Brown Rudneck, all. It is our understanding that Arnold and Matt extracted all photographs that hit on the date ranges as identified by the order, as well as any undated photographs from two of Ms. Hurd's devices, the iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro. Well, at least some things got extracted. That's good. For next steps, we propose that your team coordinate with Craig Young, the court-appointed limited discovery issue conciliator, and send him all photographs that fall within the relevant date ranges by encrypted drive. Well, at least they image two devices. That's something. So some devices did get turned over to someone. To the extent that Ms. Heard will be relying on an undated photograph, we propose that Ms. Heard identify such photograph and then the party's experts can coordinate on authenticating that particular photograph. Reasonable. As for other devices, it is our understanding that the extraction of images within the date range for the iCloud backups still needs to be done. We request this be done via Zoom between Matt and someone from your team as soon as possible. It is also our understanding that extractions still need to be done for all prior collected devices. So not everything's done, but something's done. We again request that this happens as soon as possible with Matt ob uh, observing via Zoom. We also request that all data on Ms. Heard intends to rely on is sent to Craig by February 4th. This was sent on, let's see, January 23rd. So right around the corner, 
we're almost done with this one. This is the declaration of the expert that ended up testifying experience in charge of the extraction process. The extractions per the November 8 order are complete. So when this was signed, let's see, when was this signed? 25th of February. On the 25th of February, they are saying this is complete from Heard's perspective. Okay. Uh, and virtually all of the images have been delivered to Craig Young, the court-appointed limited issue conciliator. What does virtually all mean? <laughs> My team is working on the final deliveries to Mr. Young. Forensic imaging of Ms. Heard's current devices was completed late in the evening, December 17th. This was a date that worked for us for everyone, and we agreed and was agreed to by everyone from Ms. Heard's team and Mr. Depp's team. The extraction of images from Heard's current devices was scheduled for the first week of January and then delayed due to Matt Erickson's scheduled delay. The extraction of images from Ms. Heard's current devices took about two weeks to complete, and the extraction of images from Ms. Heard's previous device, uh, previously imaged devices identified on the inventory took about four weeks. As the process of imaging of image identification and extraction takes time given the amount of devices in scope. Not all of the device, not all of the devices have images that fall within the the dates of the alleged abuse, but each of them had to be examined using screen share with Mr. Depp's team watching as part of the protocol. Oh, yes. And it sounds like some of it did. Mr. Depp's team has been entirely aware of each step of the process. Coordination with counsel and Mr. Young to arrange delivery started on January 23rd. In the next two weeks, the next two weeks were spent coordinating the delivery format of how Mr. Young was going to review them. I cooperated with Depp's team and Mr. Young throughout this process. The first delivery to Mr. Young was made on Friday, February 4th. So Hertz team is saying that Depp's team's wringing their hands and Depp's team is saying we don't have everything. Hertz team is saying that they have everything and at least some images. And now we know at least some devices were imaged. Depp's team argues they were imaged with the wrong imaging software, but something happened. Um, Lori asks the right question. What happens if you don't save your old devices? Then you can never be made to turn them over because you don't have them. That's all. The chat is saying I missed an email. I will scroll back up in just a minute. Um, When Mr. Young completed his review of the first batch of images, my team provided them to Mr. Depp and we'll continue. Mr. Depp's team should now be reviewing the images, um, which should continue as Mr. Young reviews the tens of thousands of images provided. So that's a pretty large discovery dump. Oh, we've got a transcript. Um, let's see. Robert is saying email tag is just ridiculous. Pick up the dang phone and call them. N not always, Robert. I, I don't disagree with you generally, but these attorneys are at odds having things in writing is what they want. They want these things to be in writing. So that's part of why the emails are going back and forth. Let's see. I don't think I missed an email. I think we got to them all. Um, yeah, I think we got to all the emails. Truly. I think that we did. Um, yeah, because we started with this one from November 19th. So I think we got to all the emails. If we didn't, these are publicly available documents, but I think we got to all the emails. Let's take a look at this hearing on October 29th, 2021 in front of Judge Ascarati, because what they're getting at is the ruling. I wonder if they just attached the ruling or if they attached the whole thing. Let's see. Page five. All right. I'm going to zoom, zoom real quick and see how much of this hearing. Oh yeah. Just two pages. Um, all right, let's just look at the two pages of the rule of the hearing. The court. All right. This is the matter of debt be heard. This comes on a motion to compel motion to compel for mobile devices, production of original devices and operating systems, cloud backups, and also metadata. So yes, sir, go ahead, Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu. Yes, that your honor. Thank you. May it please the court. Ben Chu for plaintiff. As this court is aware and just stated, we are here on the motion to compel the devices with the court's leave and your honor's leave. I would like to address Mr. Depp's motion. Okay. Use most of the time for that. The court. Okay. 
and then we get to the ruling, 45. I'm going to grant in part and deny in part, and we already read that. So this is just the court putting it on the record. We already read it in, in writing. This is a statement by Kevin Cohn, Data Triage Technologies, LLC Consulting Company, and talking about their backup on Sunday, June 5th, 2016. I was asked to examine iPhone backups of Amber Heard. It was her normal routine to sync her iPhone with her computer, which created backups of her iPhone on her computer. Yeah, it would have been 2016. I forensically imaged and examined the device containing Ms. Heard's iPhone backups and conclude that the backups are authentic. All right, so that's the certification of that. And then we get his CV. Um, and then this is the Duder's texts. And they are saying that these were provided in a different way. I wonder if this, I'm backing up because I wonder if any of this is regarding the Duder's text because I didn't know those were down there. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Um, attached here to his exhibit B is a true and correct printout of an Excel spreadsheet that contains the text messages between Heard and Stephen Deuters, 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 mm, that came from her iPhone backup created on August 20th, 2014. The timestamps of the text messages are in universal time code, UTC, also known as London time. Pacific time would be seven hours earlier from the timestamps. But where did they come from? Did these come from the backup? There's, there is some stuff produced. I don't think we produced all of the devices, but at least some of the devices were produced. Not none of the devices were produced, which is interesting. But where does it say these texts came from? Are we to assume they came from the backup? Maybe. Well, let's take a look and see. That's their CV, and these are the backup. All right, we're going to look through all of those. I just want to see if it says where they came from first, and then we will. All right. Uh, there's the CV. Did the backup attached as Exhibit B is a true and correct printout of an Excel spreadsheet that contains the text messages, but it doesn't say where they came from. Okay. They're saying this is why Herd's team is saying these are true and correct. Heard's team is saying that these were taken by this person and that they're providing an Excel spreadsheet of the texts and that those are true and correct. It's for me. It doesn't say where it's coming from. Um, it's not even implied that it's coming from the iCloud backups. So I'm not sure where those are coming from. And I was hoping it would say in the statement but it doesn't. It says what their experience is. It says that they've been qualified as an expert and that those are true and correct. It says they have an iPhone backup, but it doesn't say that the texts come from the iPhone backup. On Sunday, January 5th, I was asked to examine the iPhone backups. It was her normal routine to sync her iPhone with her computer to create backups. I imaged and examined the device containing the iPhone backups and conclude the backups are authentic. That's separate. The iPhone backups are separate to the text messages because it doesn't say where they were extracted from. It just says there's an Excel spreadsheet of text messages between Heard and Deuters. So I can understand. It doesn't say it comes from the backup. Where does it say it came from the backup? This. Ah, there it does. Yes, it does. Thank you, team. Contains the text messages between her and Duders that came from her iPhone backup created August 20th, 2014. Yes, keep going. Keep reading, Emily. Keep reading. Keep reading. Why it matters where it came from is because that's how we know where it came from. So last paragraph, you're right. Did I, did my brain skip over it in the first one? So this is coming from iPhone backups. They pulled the backups on, on June 5th, 2016, which is closer in time which is which is closer in time. So that happened. This must have all this must have all happened with regard to the divorce proceedings. Attached here to is exhibit B is a true and correct printout of an Excel spreadsheet that contains the text messages between her and Duders that came from her iPhone backup created August 20th, 2014. The timestamps was that not in the one above? The timestamps of the text messages are in UTC known as London time, Pacific time would be seven hours earlier. Well, that clears it up. Oh, no, I think they extracted it to Excel. I read it out loud and forgot. That's typically me. 
um, they must have extracted it out there. So totally missed it. But that's where I wanted to know, which is why I was looking for it before we started talking about it. No, it's up here too. Came from the iPhone August 20th. All right. Well, now we know where it came from. All right. Let's go through the text messages that the expert says were extracted. But it's not the original text, so how do you prove they're not altered? You have to go with the dude that says we've got it. The dude says, look, this is what this expert is saying. I'm not telling you to take it or leave it. I'm just saying this is what was provided to the court that this dude, Kevin Cohen, says that he's a forensic expert, that he did an extraction of the backups, that he took the backups from August 24, 20th, 2014, and extracted the text messages. And I don't know where they put them onto an Excel, Excel, Excel spreadsheet, but here's an Excel spreadsheet. So let's go through it. Stephen Duders, May 25th, 2014, 4 13 19 a.m. UTC. He's up in the bathroom moving slowly. We'll let you know when in route and how he is in the car. He's in some pain, as you might guess. He's been sick. We're going to get him straight to bed. We're on our way to 80, which is probably one of the homes. Hey, he's sound asleep. We're looking out for him. Amber Heard, thanks. Please let me know when you speak to him or if there's any major change or if anything goes wrong. And then Deuter says, hey, he's up. He's much better, clearer. He doesn't remember much. But we took him through all that happened. He's sorry, very sorry. He just wants to get better, which allows us to make him follow up on that promise. Stephen Deuter, he's teary. He doesn't want to be a fuck up anymore. His words. He's got bad indigestion this morning, but otherwise all right. He's gone back to sleep for a bit. Spoke to see we're going to set him up with Dr. Kipper on Wednesday. Hopefully he won't be skipping it this time. Amber Heard, if he was, he'd tell me himself, I reckon. I, I don't know what that's referring to. Maybe if he was awake, he'd be telling me. Oh, he's gone back to sleep for a bit, maybe. Um, will that doctor be in Boston? Have you told him about Charlie? Question mark. Stephen Dorders. The doc will fly to Boston. He's a much bigger deal than Charlie. I'm not worried about bringing Charlie up. I'll do that later when he's awake again. Amber Heard. Um, we're now at 5.23 p.m. UTC. Okay, I've not heard from him, which I expected. I still want to fly back to NYC today, though, on the red eye, though. I can't keep doing this. Stephen Deuters. His phone is fucking up. I'm restarting it. You will hear from him, I'm sure. This, ha like, I don't understand even how we deal with any of, like, look, I don't understand how celebrity works, but if I'm having to have these conversations with your assistant, I would be pissed. Like, no, if there was a thing, I want to talk to you. I, I just, I just, I just... Um, his phone is fucking up. I'm restarting it. Oh, let me make this bigger so y'all can see it. Um, you will hear from him. I'm sure there feel, there feels like a sea change in him this morning. He just spoke about how bad he feels and he wasn't talking physically. Um, Stephen Dorders think he's just texted you. He's incredibly apologetic and knows that he has done wrong. He wants to get better now. He's been very explicit about that this morning. Stephen Deuters feels like we're at a critical juncture, and this is now at like 6.25 p.m. UTC. Amber Heard, yes, but I don't know how to be around him after what he did to me yesterday. Amber Heard, I don't know if I can stay with him. I need time. I mean, fair. Um, Stephen Deuters, he wants to see you so much. He's distraught. Amber Heard, don't worry about the flights. Um, I'll be taking, I guess that's care. I'll be taking care of them myself. Thank you. Um, Amber Heard, and this was a few minutes later, 847 now, PM UTC. Look, he thinks, quote, unquote, he doesn't deserve this. Obviously, he has no idea what he did or to the extent that he did it. If someone was truly honest with him about how bad it really was, he'd be appalled. The man Johnny is would be humiliated and 
definitely wouldn't say to me that he doesn't deserve it. So there's a conversation context we're missing. I'm sad that he doesn't have a better way to really know the severity of his actions yesterday. Unfortunately for me, I remember in full detail everything that happened. Stephen Deuters, it was disgusting and he knows it. Stephen Deuters, he was appalled when I told him he kicked you, he cried. And that's the text we've heard a lot about. Stephen Deuters, it wasn't, I wasn't with him when he sent you the second text. He read it to me and I said it was the wrong text to send. He then sent the third one and sat and cried again after on the bed. He's a little lost boy. He needs all the help he can get. He's so very sorry, as he should be. Um, Amber Heard, he's done this many times before. Tokyo, the island, London, remember that, question mark. And I always stay, always believe he's going to get better. And then every three or so month, I'm in the exact same position. Stephen Deuters, I know it's hideous, uh, but this is one side of the man that you fell in love with and the one side of the man that fell in love with you. I know that you're hurting and you have every right to, and he knows that. Well, then why didn't you just call Stephen Deuters to testify? Because the reason this is all hearsay, because this is all hearsay, is because you need the person having the conversation. Call Stephen Deuters and ask him to testify. Because with this, there is a lot of context missing about what people were thinking. Um, I don't think Stephen, Stephen Deuters is, is deceased. I've seen that in the chat. I don't think that that's the case. Um, I, I don't think that that's the case. Only with regard to one individual. Um, but no, I don't know why they didn't call him to testify. Call him to testify. That's the solution to this being hearsay. The solution to this being hearsay. I wonder if he was deposed. I can't, I imagine that he was. The solution for this being hearsay, because this is all hearsay, is that you call him to testify. And then he explains. So text, he, Jerry Judge, yes. Jerry Judge, the former bodyguard, like the lead bodyguard, had passed away. And they talked about that, but not Stephen Duders. So chat, thank you for not. So I just want to make sure we, we do our best to get, to get things right over here. And I don't, the chat is normally right. But when I saw that question coming up a lot, that's why we wanted to talk about it. So I'm sure he was deposed in this. Amber Heard's team had a chance to call him as a witness and didn't. I want to know why, because this seems like texts that they have alluded to were going to help. Um, how is Stephen related to Gina? I believe they are married, but that I, I, it was my understanding that they were spouses. But again, you can't just go off the text messages. You have to go with all of it. And they didn't call him to testify. So then I have to wonder what else, what else was surrounding this and what he would have said. Cause he could have said, this is literally true. Or he could have said, I was placating Amber Heard to calm her down. We don't know, but these texts say exactly what Elaine said they said, but it doesn't change the fact that they are hearsay. And them being hearsay is why in the U S you have to call the witness and ask them, what did you mean by this? The person that they did call to testify, Gina Duders, um, she got dismissed in the middle. It was my understanding that she was starting to testify about the plane incident and what she had seen and then was um, yeeted because it was brought up that she might have might have posted on social about the case. It was clear that she didn't post on social about the case later, but it didn't matter because when the judge questioned her, she said, have you seen anything about the case on social? And she said, yes. And that's why she got removed. She got questioned because it came up, but she got removed because she said, yes, I have seen things about the case on social, which she couldn't. So she was the one who got removed, but they never called Stephen Deuters. They would have had his testimony. Um, and the chat is like, well, he testified in the UK 
If he testified in the UK in a way that would have been helpful to Amber Heard's team, her team could have called him. But Johnny Depp's team cannot um, call him to talk about these text messages. There, there's, there's literally no need to. Um, and that would have been a call him if these came in. So. So with that, the real Laura B said, I read it that they had pulled a spreadsheet from her phone, not in text message form. This is also what the UK court had, the spreadsheet only. Well, it didn't come in. This is hearsay. I mean, texts are hearsay. The texts they allowed in were texts between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard because Johnny Depp and Amber Heard both testified and because they're statements of a party opponent. The rules are different when it comes to a third party. He would have had to have testified. He could have testified. Um, I saw him on the Amber Heard witness list. They chose not to call him. So I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't call him, but they didn't. But they still want to bring up the text messages. But the text messages are hearsay. So that's why those didn't come in. But at least they're attached here so we can see the full context of what was said which is great, I suppose. All right, let's keep going. What else is attached to this? Order under seal. Is this their proposed... Uh, is this their proposed order or is this a court's order? This is another court order from January 25th. All right, good. Here's another court order. Let's see what the court said. These are the things I really wanted to know. Uh, this matter came to be heard upon plaintiff and counterclaim defendant Depp's motion to compel responses to the 10th set of requests for production, the 11th set, and to defendant and counterclaim Amber Heard. Um, and upon consideration of the briefs, it's great. Oh, uh, what? Responses to the 10th set of requests for production, the 11th set of requests for production to defendant and counterclaim Amber. So just Depp's motion trying to get to the 10th and 11th request for production the motion's granted in part, denied in part, and this is what they were referring to up above. The motion's granted in part with request to the 16th and 10th request for productions, modified to read as follows. All documents and communications that refer reflect any evidence of treatment of you by Dr. Bonnie Jacobs, Dr. Uh, Connell Cohen, related to Heard's medical and psychological treatment stemming from any abuse by Mr. Depp, is granted... Let's see, the motion is denied with request 4, 7 through 15. And then we don't have those underlying ones, so it's hard to have any context for those because we haven't pulled them. It is further ordered that the motion is granted in part and denied in part. And so those are all the RFPs. Let's see. Oh, that gets a little bit more detailed. And that's what I'm going to go to because the numbers don't really help us. The motion is granted in part with respect to request 17. Heard shall provide or produce any non-privileged photographs of the following subjects herself. Oh, of the following subjects. Herself, Mr. Depp, or the house, including the inside, outside, or any portions in Australia during Herds and Depp's stay in March 2015. Motion is granted in part with these requests modified to read as follows. Revise request 12. All communications between or among you, Whitney Henriquez, Io Tillett Wright, Amanda De Cadnet. Um, Christina Sexton, Joshua Drew, Paige Heard, or David Heard regarding any reactions to the news of the wedding, any advice or concerns expressed to you regarding whether or not you should marry Mr. Depp or the use or abuse of illegal drugs and or alcohol at your wedding to Mr. Depp. Revise request 29. Being the lawyers writing these requests has to be strange. This is not something the court is normally going to be like, no, you have to include all conversations about drug, the use of illegal drugs at your wedding. Revised request 29, documents and communications that refer to reflect or mention the following regarding your appearance on, appearance on The Late Show hosted by James Corden on or about December 16th, 2015, your physical appearance or mental condition during your appearance any comments made by you to any other person regarding your physical appearance or mental condition, any reactions from other persons to you about your appearance or condition on the show. It is not intended to require the production of documents that merely reflect the original booking of the appearance. Request 30, all communications between you, 
Raquel Pennington, Io Tillett Wright, and Melanie Iglesias on December 15th, December 16th, and December 17th. Any communications from April 21st, 2016 through and including the date which you filed a request for a DVTRO on May 27th, 2016 between you on the one hand and any of the friends and family that you describe in paragraph one for 53 of your witness statement that refer to any friends and family being increasingly worried for your safety, advising you that you, sh- quote, should leave, including without limitation, Io Tillett Wright, Raquel Pennington, Whitney Henriquez, and Amanda. So those are the contexts that are being requested. Is there, oh, there's more. This is the consent order. Was it signed? Yes, it was. This is from August 6th. This is a different consent order regarding discovery. Let's see what else. Hearing conducted virtually Friday, April 30th, 2021. Mm, Regarding what though? Let's, uh, regarding the motion to compel. So this is the ruling on that motion to compel we were just talking about. It seems with the request for productions, I'm going to make this small as I scroll and see what else we have. So that's them fighting over the motion to compel. We know the result of it. We just looked at it. We have another order with regard to discovery and the productions. And this is the order that John Depp produced or John C. Depp, the motion that Depp produced all responsive documents to the following request for Ms. Hurd's 10th request for productions, financial documents relied upon by Mr. White. So that's the financial expert. She'll produce responsive documents to the following revised request, provide documents sufficient to reflect all loans, benefits, perks, expenses paid for any reason in excess of $5,000 in cash or value made between May 21st, 2016 to all of the persons, including Debbie Lloyd, Christy Dombrowski, Trinity Esparza, Brandon Peterson, Cornelius Harrell, Alejandro Romero. So that's all the witnesses. And that's, you know, have you paid the experts? Have you paid the witnesses? Any any other th- things? Uh, responsive documents the above requests by September 17th. Heard should provide it. Mm, ordered that Ms. Heard's motion to compel request 10, 24, and 25th are denied. So granted in part, denied in part. And what, why we're seeing a lot of these granted in part, denied in parts is because they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth about discovery and the court's narrowing down their discovery to the things that are properly discoverable, which again are all governed by the rules of evidence and the rules of discovery to what is appropriate. Mm. Let's see. This is regarding hearing on motion from what day? Back up, back up, back up. August 6, 2021 is where we're at as we kind of cruise through these to see what else is attached here. Thank you, Your Honor. So this is middle of the hearing the court. Okay, so for 20, let's limit the threshold to 5,000. And that's what we just saw above on the how much, how have you paid any, you know, as far as employees when it comes to any salary commissions, bonuses, advances, what have you paid anyone? How much have they earned? And that's fair because that can all go to bias. It's like, oh, all of a sudden, you know, somebody somebody paid Alejandro Romero. Could that be explored as bias? It doesn't seem it happened. It never came up. It was just an example. But could you explore that as bias? Yes, that's why these things are turned over. Uh, additional motion practice that's attached that we would have seen before. That's not under seal. Let's see. That was from February. These are all those February motion practice. Ah, January 7th, 2022. So this should be right around the time of that order with regard to the thing we're actually talking about, which is the devices. We've gotten far afield. Let's see. The court, all right. In the matter of debt versus heard, this case comes today. We've had the courtroom cleared since it's under protective order dealing with the motion to compel. I understand there was an agreement. At least I signed an order for the interrogatories, but we're still on the request for productions, correct? Benchu, yes. Uh, The court, all right. Mr. Murphy, yes, Your Honor. The court, thank you for at least working through some of it. I appreciate that. Okay, all right, Mr. Chu. And then um, he asked to remove his mask. I'll put it back on when both you, Your Honor, and I and former Chief Judge White denied RFPs. And then they're getting into those requests for productions again. So this is about the written interrogatories and the documents and the objections there too. So these are all those discovery rulings. All right. 
And I think that's the rest. Yep. Discovery rulings. So when we talk about how much these legal fees are and why, this is part of why you guys are seeing why this costs so much. This is a ton of work behind the scenes. So what we got in this additional document were the much alluded to Deuters texts attached. These had previously been under seal. I know these are, um, I know these are things that have been available in other forms. I have not seen them as I've just been going through this. You guys are like, Emily, page 102, the court gets spicy with Elaine. Okay. Let's back up and give context to it. If the if the if you guys are like there's some spice, don't miss the spice. All right. We will back up for this one cuz we need context. We can't just we can't just get the court snapping out of context. Let's see. This is from November 20, 2020. November 20, 2020. On behalf of defendants Elaine Bredehoft, Joshua Treese. Let's see. All right, Ms. Bredehoff, thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Elaine Bredehoff and Joshua Tree. Joshua Trees. On behalf of the defendant, Ms. Heard, this is here on our motion to compel and for sanctions, Your Honor. I'd like, there were so many motion for sanctions. These attorneys were like, sanction them, no sanction them, no sanction them. I don't think anyone got sanctioned during this trial. But there were a lot of motions for sanctions. Yes, there were. This is here on our motion to compel and for sanctions, Your Honor. I'd like to start with the tax returns in this case. Request number 14 asks for all tax returns for Mr. Depp through, um, sorry, for 2010 through present. Your Honor granted the request. It included the portions exacting the gross income paper on September 30th. The atta- That's attachment three. Depp produced information for his loan documents according to his opposition, but he did not produce his personal tax returns. When I was taking Mr. Depp's deposition last week, at one point he said, I will give you these. And I said, are you aware the court had requested you to produce these? And he said, no, I was not aware of that. So obviously this conveyance was made by someone else. Well, I don't think, I don't think Johnny Depp is actually going through his personal returns and turning them over. I think he's probably saying to someone, can you pull those and turn them over? I don't know if that's semantics or not. Let's keep going. So obviously this conveyance was made by someone else. Now the category of documents, just as Judge Bowick in California had twice denied Ms. Heard's motion to seek documents from TMG, to the extent this court is included, is inclined to grant any portion of Ms. Heard's motion with respect to that category. The other litigation, we would respectfully request that the court order Ms. Heard to pay Mr. Depp's counsel for their time. What? We went, this must have switched. What page did we switch from? Oh, we went from page four to 17. That's why we were lost. We've jumped in time to page 17. This must be Depp's attorneys talking at this point. Um, we would respectfully request that the court order Ms. Heard to pay Mr. Depp's counsel for their time, which would be substantial and for the massive costs that would be entailed in reproducing more than 2 million documents. Holy shit. None of which have anything to do with this case or Ms. Heard and would require Mr. Bloom's counsel and TMG's counsel to, again, to refight the issue of confidentiality. So they are trying to seek something from TMG and reproducing more than 2 million documents. Wow. Finally, finally, Your Honor, as to the last category, these are categories of documents requested 6 through 9. Bretta Hoff is quite frank. No, not quite frankly. Bredehoff is frankly mistaken. There is no impasse as to these document uh, document requests. They are still, despite Mr. Tree's effort, overly broad. I will go through them very quickly. Request six and seven call for documents sufficient to show impact of other litigation on Mr. Depp's career. So that's an extremely vague and ambiguous request. There is no file of documents which, you know, impact litigation on Mr. Depp's career. We have agreed in principle to produce documents, if any, that relate to the impact of the litigation on his career, but it is a very vague request. That would come through the experts. Request number eight, Depp testified last week that Disney never wrote or otherwise informed him that it had cut him loose from the Pirates of the Caribbean series only after, only days after, mm, sorry, no, I read that badly. Mr. Depp testified last week that Disney never wrote or otherwise informed him that it had cut him loose from the Pirates of the Caribbean series only days after Ms. Heard published her op-ed in the Washington Post. 
Mr. Depp had to read about it in the newspaper. And that's what he testified to. We agree to produce documents relating to career, lost career opportunities from Disney, if any. But this request is hopeless again, or hopelessly again overbroad. It calls for materials relating to any complaints Disney may have had over the period, decisions and timing as to filming, career decisions, anything related to other litigation, financial compensation. And then we skip again to page 30. The court, all right, thank you. The objections to request, the objections to requests for productions one through five are sustained. I find them to be overly broad, burdensome. Those are objection grounds. As well as six and seven, they are sustained on the grounds as well, or on that grounds as well. Um, unduly vague, overly broad. No, overly broad and burdensome. And additionally, on the grounds of vagueness. As to six and seven, the request to produce these documents requested in the paragraph. And number eight is granted. The request as to paragraph nine is denied. The request with regards to the personal income tax returns is granted. As to the return pages, not all the supplementary documents that are attached to them. They have to specify the taxes, just the tax returns, not all, everything else. And Ms. Bredehoff, I'm going to make a comment to you. Oh. And maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. But you risk losing credibility with the court when you come before the court and accuse the other side of not following the rules, yet you repeatedly have tried to add matters to the argument docket that were not on the docket. That would be a violation of the rules. You also send vastly overbroad requests. Where's the rest? Oh, the court. Oh, the court. Hoag said, wait, is this live? I didn't realize you had moved to Thursdays already. Yes, we moved to Thursdays this week. So for those of you that are just tuning in and are like, Emily, it's Thursday. Yes, we changed our schedule in the month of August. And that's where we're at on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. I know I missed the extra day to prepare for Friday Night Live, but life is life. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and YouTube will notify you at its, as it deems appropriate, I seem to believe, and then do the youtube -y things. But also, you can follow me around the interwebs where I will also remind you that I'm live. But hi-ho, good to see you. All right, so the court is pissed. This isn't... Th just to put a pin on it, this is November 20th, 2020. November 20th, 2020, the court says... You risk losing credibility with the court when you come before the court and accuse the other side of not following the rules, yet you repeatedly have tried to add matters to the argument docket that were not on the docket, and that would be a violation of the rules. So thank you, Chad, for being like, no, 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 the court gets, the court gets spicy in this one. The court is annoyed well before this goes to trial. And yet, I thought that Judge Ascarati was tremendously patient during this trial. I would not have guessed at how much backstory there was here with the court and counsel based on the way the court conducted themselves during this trial. When Ms. Bredehoff was frustrated, the court actually came in and helped. The court did not rush Ms. Bredehoff. The court did not yell at Elaine in front of the jury. This judge has more patience than I could ever muster. And I think, no, I was more frustrated. I am more frustrated now than I was seeing particularly Elaine call this judge's judgment into question, seeing Amber Heard do the same in the media. The more we get into this, uh, um, the more that we, the more that we get into this, the more that I see how much fuckery had been going on. And you guys are like, no, this, oh, you're right. It was Judge White. This was not Judge A yet, because 2020. This was before the Honorable Bruce D. White. So this was going on with the previous judge and not here. So thank you, Chad. This, this was going on across judges. Maybe, maybe Elaine got a better shake with Judge A. But the court is already frustrated. And Judge A did a very good job of being patient. But this must have been exhausting litigation for everyone. I'm exhausted going through it. This must have been exhausting for everyone involved.
Whoa. And we're not even done yet. That was just the digital stuff. We didn't even get to the exhibit with the plea and bar, which is where we're going next. But this is defense's exhibit with regard to the um with regard to the case in the UK. So let's get through um let's get through some of this. This is additional pictures and this is additional testimony from the UK. These are first look for me with you. I'm going to scroll through these pictures real quick so I can give any necessary warnings. But those of you following this case in court know what these generally entail. I'm going to make sure there's nothing graphic. These are generally the photos we saw in court. Um, the broken bed. Let's see what else. Um, photos of Amber Heard's face and then transcripts. So again, as we get to the transcripts, sometimes they are graphic. Uh, I don't know what these will be, but that's What's happening as we're getting through this? These are proceedings from the closing arguments of the attorneys in the UK trial that I'm very interested to get into. And then we are going to go to your questions because we were like two and a half hours in. We're going to go to your questions, have a bit of a, more of a conversation. I am going to go through the motions in limine and pull out the bits that I think are helpful and put that into the podcast for next week because truly... I would like to move on to covering other cases because the fighting of the lawyers and the back and forth is just like, oh. and the motions in limine are both. Noel's like the defense motion in limine is 995 pages. Yeah. And the motion in limine from, um, from Depp is like 400 pages. So those I'm going to summarize instead of going through them live because I just have to, we just have to. So hang on tight. We will get to, we will get to questions in a minute. Let's talk about the UK. As a reminder, I have a um, I have a podcast episode and other coverage on the UK case. I went through the judge's ruling, and at that time, people were like, "There's so much more to the UK case." I'm like, "I'm just going through the judge's ruling." And we were like, "But there's more." I'm like, "I'm just going through the judge's ruling. This is what the judge ruled." And I'm like, I get that that's, that you, that there's more, but this is what the judge ruled. Now that we have the U.S. case and what's in evidence in the U.S. case, I am more inclined to be like, well, it's interesting that the judge found this and that. But the rules of evidence are different. The way that they address it is different. The question that was being answered in the U.K. case is different. So all of those things kept in mind. Let's look at these. These were defendants' exhibits to the plea and bar. Now, we covered the plea and bar and Judge A's ruling from the plea and bar in a podcast episode a number of weeks back. So why the UK case matters, why it's different. These are kind of supplemental to what we covered then because we didn't have this um, because it was still under seal. And now we have it. And the type is so small. We're going to do our best. I'm going to keep a, um, an eye at the page numbers at the top as we go through this. And these are the closings. Closing, Shearborn. The first issue which your lordship will need to decide and one which we will not take you much, would, well, and one which will not take you much time to do so is the meaning of the article. The claimant's meeting is that Mr. Depp was guilty on overwhelming evidence of serious domestic violence. Judge Nickel, let me just look at the pleadings. Interesting. So this is more of a conversation than a closing argument. Great. Mr. Shearborn, your lordship will find them in file one, tab 13. Does your lordship have tab 13? That would be so weird to call the court your lordship and not your honor. It feels weird to say. Maybe next time that we go back through the Netflix Bridgerton stuff, we will just interpose the court and your honor for your lordship. It feels like it's appropriate. We'll just do it there. Different legal systems. You know, the thing that's fascinating to me, though, is in the UK, the prosecutors are crown prosecutors because obvious they're prosecuting on behalf of the government. The government's the crown. It always fascinates me. It always it just sounds it sounds so posh, the crown prosecutors. 
because you're representing the crown. It sounds so much better than, you know. Oh, Siri, I'm not sure I understand today either. It sounds so much better than like, Your Honor, Emily Baker for the people. <laughs> it just, I don't know. The, the crown has ring to it. But alas, different legal systems. Mr. Shearborn, if you turn to internal page, perhaps it is easier if I tell your lordship, the judge, paragraph 10, Shearborn, paragraph 10, just to make good what I said to your lordship moments ago, there is... There it says that, quote, the claimant was guilty on overwhelming evidence of serious domestic violence against his then wife, end quote. And then these important words, quote, causing significant injury and leading her to leading her to fearing for her life, for which the claimant was constrained to pay no less than five million to compensate her and which resulted in him being subject to a continuing court restraining order. And for that reason, he is not fit to work in the film industry, end quote. Where is that from? I have questions because it was a temporary court restraining order and the money being paid was a divorce settlement. So this is characterized differently than I understand it. And I want to know where that's coming from because I am curious. Just to make good on what I said to your lordship before um, about allegations which required some evidence to meet them, your lordship will find them if you turn over the page to page 10 you will find a series of allegations relating to the way in which, as I say, the article was not properly researched and was presented in a wholly one-sided manner. There is no evidence at all from the defendant's journalists to meet that. So this is Depp's attorney. As if that is not enough, your lordship will see, and I ask you to read paragraph 13.5 on the particulars dealing with Miss Kendall and the way in which she was misquoted, because I will have things to say about that in due course. For the moment, that is the meaning we ask your lordship to find. Mr. Depp, as we say, was tried, convicted, and sentenced. That is what the article suggests. So the short answer is, is that we are here because the newspaper and Mr. Wooten chose to publish this extremely serious allegation, an allegation which Mr. Depp says and has always said is completely untrue. Not only that, there have persisted, they have persisted in saying that it is true, and I will have more to say about that in due course. I don't use in due course nearly enough. That is why Mr. Depp is bringing this claim for libel, subjecting himself to this painful public process because he knows it is untrue, as do all the people from various walks of his life, friends, some of them, um, wait, friends, quote, some of them, some nothing to do with him, I don't know, I'm not following, who have come along to give evidence and themselves be accused of lying for Mr. Depp. It was in one sweep by Miss Wass, as she gave yesterday in her closing submissions, regardless of the fact that a number of them do not even work for Mr. Depp or do not have to rely on him for, her, for their livelihood, as they made plain in their evidence. Yes, we say, why else would Mr. Depp in this very private man, as he explained, expose all the most intimate details of his personal life, even the very little privacy he has managed to maintain despite his successful career as an actor, the point will not be lost on your lordship any more than it is lost on those outside this courtroom. As And this would have been highlighted by those who submitted it. As for the defendants, they could have just ignored Miss Hurd's claims, but they chose not to. They could have just reported them alongside Mr. Depp's position, but they deliberately decided not to do so. They chose instead, as I say, to convict Mr. Depp and that is what they seek to do in this court to prove that this reputation-destroying career-ending allegation is true. That is what your lordship is concerned about, true or not. So as I say, that is the short answer as to why we are here, but there is also a long answer, and it goes back beyond the article published in 2018. It goes to May 27th, 2016, to a scene we have watched on the screen before you to Miss Heard outside a courtroom in Los Angeles surrounded by paparazzi photographers and the media and sporting rather visible bruises. That is when her story started. As far-fetched as we say it has proved to be, when she first decided to tell the world that Mr. Depp was a wife beater, oh, they went for the tell the world too. Inter everyone went for tell the world. 
Tell the world, Johnny. Everybody just went there. Fair. All of them were going to use her words against her, which in argument in court is powerful. It's hard to think of a more public way to do this. However much she protested to the contrary, she has set herself up ever since as an advocate of the hashtag MeToo movement. And in the process, we say she has picked up her theme and run with it. It's interesting how much they say we say instead of we allege. It's interesting. New allegations of domestic violence have tumbled out over the years, new twists to those allegations, and even more in the last few days before trial. And in this courtroom, as she gave evidence, particularly in re-examination, which I believe is cross-examination, it, ha- it is hard to keep up with them. Even the defendants have not pursued many of the most recent ones. Um, I don't know if that's a fair argument. If there are new allegations, the son wouldn't have relied on them. So they shouldn't be bringing them up because if the son wasn't told them at the time, they're kind of irrelevant. Not kind of. They're wholly irrelevant because once the son published, anything that happened after doesn't go to their knowledge when they published. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm not surprised that the son UK's defense wouldn't rely on the most recent allegations. You can imagine though, how Mr. Depp feels about it, given that some of them were not even put to him. So the longer answer as to why we are here is because Ms. Heard has chosen to tell the world about her allegations of domestic violence. This has nothing to do with Mr. Depp's supposed PR machine or his supposed influence in Hollywood. This is because Ms. Heard has wanted to tell her story on any view. We say Ms. Heard is a complex individual with a complex history, medical, emotional, Um, As she described the professionals who looked after her, why has she chosen to publicize her claims is not, is really not something this court needs to answer fair because this claim is not brought against Ms. Heard. It's brought against the Sun newspaper and Mr. Wooten turning to what your Lordship needs to decide as you have said on more than one occasion. And with respect, rightly, this court needs to decide whether the allegation that Mr. Depp is guilty of serious physical assault on Ms. Heard causing her significant injuries is true or not. The judge just one minute. Yes. There is little more to it than that. Let me explain. First of all, the burden of proof is obviously on the defendants. They need to convince your lordship that the allegation is true. Now, given that this is to all intents and purposes, an allegation of criminality, serious criminality, the court has always required a higher degree of proof. The judge, just a moment or just a minute. I understand your lordship wants to take a note, and I'm not trying to dissuade your lordship, but just for your lordship's reassurance, this is dealt with in our closing skeleton, which you will see. I'm imagining their outline. The way in which the court has required a higher degree of proof has been expressed in different ways in different cases. The court denied that, by the way, in their ruling. It comes down to this. This court requires compelling and cogent evidence before it will find that an allegation of some an allegation that someone is guilty of a serious crime or offense is true. Evidence which is clear, consistent, and forceful. Why is this so important? Well, as the authorities recognize, it is effective, effectively the operation of the cornerstone principle of the presumption of innocence. The son may have forgotten that. Mr. Wooten, the author of the article, may have forgotten that, but it appears your lordship uh, may have forgotten that it appears, but your lordship will not. It is of particular importance to a case such as this. The judge then says the presumption of innocence is important because someone ought not to be convicted of a criminal offense unless they are proved to be guilty to the requisite standard. My Lord, yes. The court, I am not deciding. I am not charged with convicting anybody. And that's what the court found in their ruling too. The court found in their ruling that the standard for defamation was not the same standard for a criminal conviction. And I don't disagree with the court. So they continue on. I'm not going to go through their entire closing because, again, this is public. This is available um, on Andrea Burkhardt's website. I want to see why this segment was chosen and what they are using it for, and we will get to that next. So let's see how this plays in to the court in... um, Oh, this must also be the court in the UK because this is November 10th, 2020. Let's see. And this was attached. 
Mm, the, it starts with yellow bellied. <laughs> no, I don't consider Jerry Bruckheimer to be a yellow interruption. Did you consider Sean Bailey to be yellow bellied? Yeah. Why? I wonder if this is a depot because this is time stamped. This might be a deposition transcript. Uh, because he wasn't man enough to listen. I was involved in five films in that series of Pirates of the Caribbean, and I was very lucky to be a part of that, and I was very happy. I'm still happy that I was a part of that because I have a character that has made a lot of people smile and happy, and that gives me great pleasure. But when when these people who have made upwards of four, five, six, seven billion, eight billion dollars on the ration of films that you've done for them, and your character is on the ride in Disneyland in three different spots and in Shanghai and in Orlando and all over the place, I found it fascinating that not one call. Nobody was man enough to give me the boot based on the allegations, and but it was still okay to leave the supposed wife beater on the rides, and it's still okay for them to sell merchandise of the supposed wife beater, and they can still sell action figures of the supposed wife beater. They haven't taken me off their rides, so I would say that something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Do you know for sure, question, do you know for sure you're not going to be a part of Pirate 6? Answer, without question. Question, and this is based only on the article that came out sometime after the op-ed. Mr. Chu, objection to the form of the question. I think that misstates the testimony, but you may answer. Oh, this is a depot. Answer, I don't, I don't recall the dates of what went first, how this all went down. I'm sorry, your question again. Question, do you know for certain? Answer, right. Question, that you're not on Pirate 6. Answer, oh, that I said yes, no. This is why the courts ask people to not talk over each other because you see these line breaks are when people are talking at the same time and it makes it very difficult. Um, KIU, a.k.a. Kristen, said, don't blame Denmark. <laughs> don't blame us in Denmark. I don't know where that expression comes from. I truly don't know where something's rotten in the state of Denmark comes from. It came up in testimony, I think. Um, let's see. Question. And then I said, is that based on the article in the newspaper sometime shortly after the op-ed from Amber Heard? Answer, yes, I believe it's from that. And I believe it's from the global barrage of fraudulent claims against me that have flown throughout the world on this thing called the Internet. Maybe you heard of it. Shakespeare. Thank you. Hamlet. Perfect. Hamlet. Thanks all. Lots of Shakespearean references lately. Interesting. Keeps coming up. Time to reread Shakespeare, Emily. In in when we're not reading the when we're not reading all of the litigation in this case. <gasps> Sorry, that have flown throughout the world on this thing called the internet in various magazines and all that. As I've stated earlier, things that she said, did, yeah, I believe, of course, there was no way they were going to let me in Pirates. They were going to bring me into Pirate 6. If someone's out there screaming about you being this horrible human being, and then the press backs it up and sells it to you, sells it, you know, question. So you assume that because of everything that's been continuing on in the allegations, that you're not going to be in Pirate 6. Ben Chu, objection to the form of the question, Miss State's testimony. Answer, I can tell you the God's honest truth right now, based on everything, if they came to me with 300 million and a million alpacas, nothing under this earth, on this earth, would get me to go back and work with Disney on Pirates of the Caribbean film, on a Pirates of the Caribbean film. Okay, thank you. So th that was brought up um, in it. Oh, I've read Shakespeare. Shakespeare, listen to me. I've read Shakespeare. It's just been a long time. Um, so my memory for where things come up is, is not great. But this is where the quote came up in the deposition. So this is where we got the million alpacas referenced in the plea and bar. So there we go. We finally got to where it came from during this deposition. I don't know how long into this deposition they were. I believe it's, I believe it's um, Rottenborn questioning him. And we see Ben Chu making the objections. And this is his God's honest truth. If they came to me with 300 million and a million alpacas, nothing under this earth would get me to go back and work on the pirates. 
question. Okay, thank you. In your complaint, paragraph five, it says Mr. Depp's reputation and career were devastated when Ms. Heard first accused him of domestic violence on May 27th, 2016. In what way was your career devastated at that point? Mr. Chu, excuse me, which complaint are you referring to? Bretta Hoft, his complaint, Mr. Chu, could you show it to him? Ms. Bretta Hoft, no, I don't need to show it to him. I just quoted it. <laughs> Sounds like Bretta Hoft's doing some of the questioning. No, I don't need to show it to him. I just quoted it. <laughs> Mr. Chu, you don't need to show him a document you're asking him about? Snark. I could read that with better snark. Hold on. Mr. Chu. You don't need to show him a document you're asking him about? Elaine. That's correct. I absolutely don't have to. I'm asking him what his was your career in G's. What's the word count on all that? <laughs> that was the most unfortunate page split. This goes from page 110 to page 418. This is the weirdest page split ever. <laughs> That's correct. I absolutely don't have to. I'm asking him what his was your career in. And then it jumps and then it jumps to G's. What's the word count and all that? I don't need it. It's now this. Is it public? This right here, his his decision. Question. You don't get to ask me a question. This is the depot going off the rails. Great. That seems like it's Depp answering at the top there. Question. You don't get to ask me a question, but I did ask you. You're aware that it's public. Answer. Ah, oh, that's a good. So, well... Question, if it had been in your favor, you would have agreed with him and thought he was right and have been thrilled with his decision, wouldn't you? Mr. Chu, objection to the form of the question calls for speculation, but you may answer. Ms. Charleston Bredehoff, question, would you have believed you were vindicated, would you not? Mr. Chu, objection to the form of the question, it's hypothetical question to a fact witness. Answer, I'm going to say the same thing that I, darn it, it jumps again from page four, wait, why are we going from 418 back to page 199? Who ordered these? Because this goes from page 110 to page 418 to page 199. Suggest that Elon Musk is financing or behind Amber Heard claiming that she has been domestically abused and violent and the victim of domestic violence by you? Question mark. Mr. Chu, and just to be clear, Johnny, you cannot answer that if the information came from your counsel. Answer. It's not going to be answered. It can't be answered. Question. So the answer would be no. You have nothing other than communications with counsel. Is that correct? Yes. So let's go back. Do you have any evidence that even a dollar that Amber Heard has made based on the fact that she has come forward and said that she was the victim of domestic abuse and violence by you? Mr. Chu, objection. Asked and answered. Calls for speculation. But you may answer one last time. Answer. You want to know if I have proof of that? No, I can't say that I do. I haven't really checked in with her. Snark. Question. Do you have any evidence at all that Mr. Heard was that Miss Heard has received any kind of movie role or opportunity as a result of saying, coming forward and saying that she was a victim of domestic violence and abused by you? Answer. I don't know the answer to that. Question. All right. What do you think your reputation is today? Mr. Chu objection. That's vague and ambiguous. Mm hmm. The witness, that's Mr. Chu, objection to the form of the question, vague and ambiguous. Elaine, you have contended that you are damaged in your complaint. Your reputation is damaged. What is your reputation? Mr. Chu, objection. And now we get back to page 419. Oh, boy. Did yesterday to you, and I hope, I hope this makes sense, whether Justice Nichols saw things in favor of my case against the son or not. So this must be Johnny Depp speaking again. Whether this case, whether this may land us, let's say, if I won every case, if I won every little trinket or whatever, I still will lose. I've still lost. And that started April 22nd. And then the last time I saw her in May or whatever it was, or question 2016, answer somewhere, I've still lost. You understand because it, I will carry this with me. Baggage, the baggage of it, the accusations, whether I win or whether I'm deemed some kind of horrible creature that should be locked in a jail cell or in a tomb or whether I'm king of the universe, I've lost. I've already lost by the damage done. 
So my content, so my continuing my search for the truth, my continuing to demand the truth is not for me to win, but it's for the people out there, the women, the victims of this type of thing who are not believed, who are being lied to by your client, pretending to be some new Messiah of the woman's movement. She is a fraud. Anything else? So if I can help other people by continuing, I certainly will now. Mr. Chu, this is 11. Thank you. Deposition ex exhibit number 11. The witness, thank you. Elaine, I want to show you what's been marked as exhibit 11. And then they get into that. These are bodyguards. Now we've jumped to page 695. Uh, question, do you understand in this lawsuit, you have the burden of proof to prove that it's false? Answer, all right. Question, do you understand that? Mr. Chu, objection, form of the question, to the extent, while clearly it calls for a legal conclusion. Answer, the burden of proof is on me to prove it's false. Well, question, I'm just asking if you understand that. Answer, I walk into this case with what I walked into the other case with, and that's the truth. And the outcome is the outcome is the outcome. I can't, I have nothing to do with that. I mean, that's a fair perspective. You don't, the jury does. I can only speak my truth and hope that justice will in fact prove that Miss Heard was not ever touched, abused by me in any way, shape, or form. That's, that is the truth. Question, if you view the decision in the UK, uh, this jumps again. No, it doesn't. Okay. If you view the decision in the UK as an opinion of one man and we go to trial by the jury and the jury decides in favor of Amber Heard, is your decision, is your position going to be that's the opinion of seven people? That's a fair question. Objection to the form of the question. It's hypothetical. Uh, question to a fact witness. It's argumentative. I'm so interested to see his answer here. Answer, no. I'm not going to say that's the opinion of seven people. Listen, it can be the opinion of one man. It can be the opinion of 200 people. It can be the opinion of 1,000 people. And they could believe that I did do those things, which I did not take part in any of what Miss Hurt accuses me of. It is outright fiction. Therefore, I can only hope that people will hear the truth and understand it to be the truth. But I don't think that the, the young soldiers who were storming the beaches at Normandy, I don't think they were saying, hey, let's have pizza tonight. I think that they knew what they were, what they'd gone into. So what I'm saying is if, if this does come out, the decision in this particular case comes out in Miss Hurd's favor, then that is what will happen. But that's not going to make me go, my God, I must have done it. Do you understand? N sort of. I sort of understand that he says he's running headlong into this knowing he can lose, but he needs to tell his truth. That's what I took from that. Chat, you let me know. It is a weird metaphor. Chat, you let me know what you think. I think this says I they knew what they were running into and that it could be very, very bad, which it was. And I know what I'm running into and I know it can be very, very bad, but I'm running into it anyway. I think that's, um, so let's see. All right. So you're not going to get what you're seeking anyway. You're not going to get Mr. Chu object answer. I told you already, I can go through this case and if it's, if it goes in my favor and the truth is it comes out, I think that what that will do will help people out there, the women out there to not have to listen to someone who's built a foundation, some foundation that they can stand on a platform and then use that platform to further their image as this great savior and public speaker and an ambassador to this or that or this or that. Clearly, those are her goals and I'm not going to be the springboard that gets her there based on her lies. Woo! Question. You've asked in your complaint to be awarded all expensive and costs, including, and then that's the end of that transcript. Um, defendants exhibits to the supplemental plea and bar. This is from, this is a deposition exhibit. Um, and then these are photos attached to the plea and bar. I saw a question come through that I absolutely wanted to answer because um, it made a very good point. Question from Pam Myers. Is this the order of the pages that were given to Andrea after she paid over 3K for them? Not cool. This has nothing to do with the court, just so I'm clear. This is the order the attorneys filed them in. The court has turned them over the way that the attorneys filed them. 
So this is not on the court. This is not on the clerk's office. This is the way the attorneys filed them. Does that make sense? So that's why. So thank you for asking, Pam, so I could address it. I saw that that question and it popped out. All right. And then they've attached to their plea and bar a number of photos. Um, these were exhibits used, it looks like, in the deposition. And so these are more photos that we ended up seeing in trial or more of the photos that we ended up seeing in trial. There might be some in here that we did not see. Um, this one looks a little easier to read. I never really appreciated what the lampshade read or said during trial, but this says good luck and be careful at the top. Uh, clothing racks, clothing racks. Uh, one of the Amber Heard face photos that we saw on trial. Another one of the face photos that we saw on trial. I think this is meant to be the scalp photo that we saw on trial um, with a bruise in this vicinity. Another scalp photo. These are actually a little more clear than the ones that were at trial. Um, this is the writing. Why be a fraud? All is such bullshit. This is one of the photos that came in in trial. This is the broken bed. This one's a little more clear than some of the other ones with the, uh, with the, the supposed pocket knife. Let's see. Face photo, face photo. Some of these came in and some of these didn't. I don't remember if that one came in or not. So these are more of the photos that were attached to the plea and bar. And then there was another hearing from September 18th, 2020 with Judge White. Conducted virtually. Let's see. Who was appearing? It doesn't say. Because it jumps to page 35. As to the documents that I guess I've got sort of categorization here. Request, fourth request for production 14 sixth. I'm not going to go through the RFP numbers. These are basically the information related to the divorce case. Request is denied as to those documents. It is denied under the doctrine of it's enough is enough. <laughs> the court this is the judge it's denied under the doctrine of stop it stop it stop it it's denied under the, doc the doctrine of it's enough is enough you all have been through the divorce already we're not going to retry that divorce in this case and that's what i deem this to be aimed at Fourth RFP one and two, that is to be produced by September 30th. The tax documents, it's granted in part, denied in part. And then it goes into the tax documents, and that's the end of this additional exhibit to the plea and bar. So here's what I propose to do just based on the hour. Um, these Jordan is correct. These are scans on scans on scans of these photos. So scans on scans on scans. Um, I'm going to go through the motions in limine because they're so long and kind of pull out anything legally significant or interesting and then absolutely get that covered in the podcast so that we can move on to the other cases that have been that we've been needing to discuss and that have been neglected but I, judge white's like un, stop it we're not relitigating the divorce but with that i have questions you have questions it's time to fack around and find out <laughs> FAQ and find out. That's where we're going now. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to go and move around my screen a little bit so I can read your questions a little bit bigger. Those are a lot of documents and we're still not through all of them. Um, my takeaways from today. It was interesting to actually see in what form the Deuters texts were produced, that they were produced in all the texts we saw in trial seemed to be in screenshot that those were produced on a spreadsheet. But there is the expert declaration saying, look, these come from this backup. The backup we took, this is how we took the backup. That's really interesting to see how they got to there. It didn't come in. Um, and with it not coming in, it the court ruled some way. I don't know why they didn't just um they didn't just call him, but they probably knew what he was gonna say and chose not to. As for the cat that is now on the chair, that is George. Fred is on my desk and will probably be walking by in just a moment where you will see his tail. Fred is 
desperately trying to lay on my keyboard and I'm not letting him. Fred! But Fred has more white on him. So Fred is white and orange. Hi, buddy. George is all ginger. So, um, so that's what's going on with, with what we've seen today. It's very, very interesting. Um, let's see. So I'm going to get to questions. Fred's just like, I'm going to sit on you no matter what. All right, let me back up a little bit. All right, Fred. We're, yeah, you're just, he's like, I'm just going to be on your lap. Hi, buddy. All right, fine. Fred, George, George perks up in the back. Yep. He's just like, hi, buddy. Um, how do lawyers keep track of the time spent on a client's case outside of court? Oh, there's various ways of tracking, tracking softwares. That's your billable hours. Depending on the type of retainer you're on, there are different ways to do it, depending on the type of software your firm uses. But don't you worry, lawyers track sometimes down to six minutes, sometimes down to 10 minutes, sometimes down to 15 minute increments. It just depends on the firm. So it just depends, but that's how they track it outside of court time. And then it truly depends on the firm. Some court times are done by half day, some by full day. It's so much tracking. Again, things that I hate. So billable hours are not, not something I ever wanted to have to deal with and didn't. I never worked in a billable hour arrangement. Oh, now we have Fred Glitter. Fred, you are just so floofy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Fred hair on my face. We're trying to do questions, Fred. All right. I know. He just is like, can we just pay attention to me now, though? Um, The Shadow Knight question. So if the texts were only ever found in Excel format, does that increase the likelihood that they are fake? Uh, it seems like Stephen never had them and Amber never produced the actual texts. That's what it seems like. Um, Hogue is like, Ah, uh, billing, a whole lot of notes and specific programs. Yep. And and Hogue can speak to that better because he worked in uh he worked in big law where that was done. I did not have to deal with that because I worked mostly in the DA's office. I worked as a research attorney for judges, where again, you work all the time and just get paid what you get paid. And then I worked on um then I worked just on project basis, which I liked much better. And now I'm here. So Billables are not something I ever wanted to do. All righty. Um, I'm going to get to some more questions. I'm going to get to some of the super chats. And that's where we're going. I saw a question I wanted to get to. And I think it it zoom zoom Because there are over 20,000 of you here. I should probably say to do the YouTube things. Um, the the likey, subscribey, all those things. Um, you guys know where to find me around the internet. At the Emily D. Baker. All the stuff. So let's get to some of these um, texts or texts, super chats, super chats. Um, why were Paul Bettany texts allowed? He wasn't a witness. There were texts from Depp to Paul Bettany allowed, and then they had some of the Bettany texts in for context. So the, the texts from Bettany weren't to prove the truth of the matter. The text from Depp were relevant and were offered against a party opponent and he was able to testify to them. Could Amber Heard have testified about the text? She couldn't have brought them herself. Amber Heard couldn't bring the texts, because this is where we get into statements by a party opponent. Amber Heard couldn't have brought up her text back and forth to Stephen Deuters on her own. Depp's lawyers could have confronted her with it and be like, but you said this. They're not going to, because they don't want the completeness of the rest of the text to come in. And Amber Heard has no other way to bring them in. She can't offer her own statements. So the Betney texts were brought to impeach Johnny Depp with his own words and the rest of the texts were used for context. So if that makes sense. So Depp could have brought them up. They were not going to do that, um, but they could have. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the Real Lawyer B, I heard they tried to assign Stephen as an agent like Adam. Thus Johnny speaking through Stephen, judge denied it. Stephen would have lots of other to testify to, so they didn't want to call him, in my humble opinion. Uh, there's a reason they chose not to. The thing that bothers me the most about it is that when Amber Heard complains, like, these were kept out, it's not the whole story. Yes, the texts were out, but there's context there, because then why didn't you call the witness? So explore the entire story. 
And if the whole story is, well, we think he would have just lied for Johnny because they were friends or he worked for him or whatever, at least say that out loud. But don't put it on the court. Oh, the court wouldn't allow these in. Because if he had testified, I wonder if he would have been allowed to be questioned about the texts. I imagine he would have been allowed to be questioned about the text because he's testifying. But maybe not because they are out of court statements. If they were inconsistent out of court statements, he could have been impeached with them by Amber Heard's lawyers if they had called him. So there, that's it's not the whole story to say, oh, these weren't allowed in. Thanks for getting me through my depot today. Abra, I hope you're 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 paying attention to what you're doing. <laughs> and you are just filling in here on the side. Emily and Mods, you guys put smiles on many of our faces. Thank you. How does it feel to be everyone's favorite funny, smart, and caring YouTuber? I don't know. Some days it's really busy. I love this community more than anything. So um it's it's a lot of fun to be here with you guys. We were out last night at God, the, I have so much fuzz. This cat gives no shits about how fuzzy I am now because of his his floof. But last night I was out with uh, my husband. We went to go see Kevin Hart perform here in Nashville. And I ran into a number of law nerds. And it was so much fun to see you out in public and to say hello and to get to share a hug or a handshake or just a, oh, my God, hi, as we were, you know, crossing in, in the hallways and stuff. It was it was lovely. I love this community and that's the thing I look forward to coming and streaming every day. So even when it's a lot of work, even when I'm tired of this case, which I know you guys can tell, I'm just, <sighs> it's tired. Um, Courtney, thank you for letting me know. I will go look. I have not been in the Patreon messages in a moment. Ponards, one of my five is ginger and white and named George. That's amazing. George's are all ginger back there. He looks like, a, he looks like a lion. Question, will you cover the Charter Communications Spectrum 7 billion lawsuit in Texas? I haven't seen it yet, so I never say never, but there needs to be something that pulls it into our realm, um, so I would have to look. Last question, I was mistaken. Was I, Dr. D. Campbell, was I mistaken in thinking that the TMZ lawyer said in court that Tremaine received a subpoena? I would have to go back and watch that testimony. Um, I believe that Depp's, Depp's team was not asking to enforce a subpoena, um, but I would have to go back and look at my coverage of that time because Depp's team was not trying to enforce a subpoena because Tremaine voluntarily showed up. So even if he had been subpoenaed, part of the complexity of the case being in Virginia is if they had subpoenaed Morgan Tremaine in California, I don't think in the time that they had, they could have gotten the court in California to perfect a subpoena where it could have been enforced. It's more like a courtesy subpoena, like here, here's your invitation to show up, but if you don't show up, the court in Virginia can't really do much about it. So that's when they were saying he voluntarily is here. He might have received a subpoena, like here's your, you can come to court, but they couldn't force a subpoena. He wasn't compelled by the court to come testify. He was not under court order. We're enforcing this subpoena. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. So when Depp's attorney said, no, it's voluntary, he might have physically received it, but yeah. So anywho, um, Donna C, I saw your TED talk last night on YT, on YT, on YouTube and you're so inspiring. Thank you. I, um, look, I am not a perfect human. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this thing. A, not just this YouTube thing, but all of the things, the best I can. It is always my goal here to bring compassion and conversation and allow everyone to have a difference of opinion while having a compassionate conversation about it. And that's always been my goal here. And it's incredible to me that we can have 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 people on our lives and still maintain those rules. A lot of that is because the mods are in the chat. And a lot of that's because the law nerds are dedicated to that too. So I try to just share my lessons that I'm learning because I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. And if I can share them and say, this is what I learned from that, I hope that it provides a shortcut for some of you that are like, ah, I see, maybe I can go through that. Especially when we talk about, you know, ADHD, when we talk about tough topics, when we talk about things that are really sensitive, just trying to bring compassion to the conversation. Because right now, um, there's not a lot of room online to be a human. And I think our space gives a lot of room to be human. 
and to talk about the back and forth of what's going on and not just be like, oh, this side or oh, that side. It's like, let's see what the facts are. Let's see what everything says. Let's be curious about it and look. And it's a big part of why there's no disparage in the chat because it's real easy, especially when we talk about a James Spears or a Glenn Maxwell. It's real easy to just want to just say all the names and call all the words. But that just kind of shuts our brains down from looking at what's going on in the cases because even people that we hate deserve due process. Even people that have done horrific things deserve to have their legal cases looked at and deserve to be heard. And I try to balance that with the types of cases we cover and try to at least tell you where my feelings are on a thing. You all know how I feel about James Spears. We still don't disparage in the chat. It's, it's awful starting to watch what's happening in that case. I talked about it in the podcast yesterday, but we're still going to break down the case and talk about it. And if there's things that he should get due process wise and discovery and all that, we'll talk about that too. So thank you. I, I just try to help share and demystify all the things that we have been through to try to make the internet conversation a bit more compassionate. Sometimes that's naive. Um, and we try. Dana said, you rock. I found you during Debbie Heard. I'm staying because you're a rock star and kind. Well, thank you. We try. Speaking of TMZ, did you see the documentary they did on the trial? Haven't had time to watch it. Just saw a short bit. I didn't know TMZ did a documentary. I'll look. Andrea hinted that Heard's lawyer submitted the subpoena to help TMZ object. Hmm. I'll go look. I mean, I, I always love seeing Andrea's takes on things. I'll go look. They objected very, very, very quickly. And they knew what was going on, so they objected very quickly. I'll go look. Subpoena was from Elaine to back TMZ's lawyer's case. Yeah, because when when um, you guys are like, it was Elaine, she subpoenaed him the night before so TMZ lawyers could claim he was compelled. So sketchy. Because he wasn't compelled. He clearly wasn't compelled. And Ben Chu said that. But I, if you guys really want to know what went down with it, um... Go, I, I don't even remember which day of trial it was, but all that argument was in open court with the lawyers. And we, I covered it. We covered that hearing with the court. Will we find out why Jennifer H's email didn't come in? I, I don't know. Cause we haven't seen all the rulings. I want to go look at the motions in limine and see what they were arguing on that. We just haven't gotten to all the motions in limine yet. Fred, you have, you have furred my face. <laughs> but there is. There are wings that are getting stuck in my ears. There is cat hair flying. We've we've just we've jumped the shark this evening, friend. It's not even evening this afternoon. So I don't know if we will find out. I'm gonna keep reading and we'll see. Where is Pin Caso? That is the number one question I have. We haven't seen it. Um, Milo's mom said BFF phone hacked and they threatened to post nude pictures. Him, everyone. Oh gosh. Um I'm sorry. Um, that's, uh, that's the worst, but I also appreciate the go ahead and post it, whatever. It kind of takes the power away. Ugh. Look y'all two factor authentication, physical authentication keys. You have to lock your stuff down. People are crafty. People are creative. Don't click the link. The digital age is wild. And if we all had a little more compassion, this kind of stuff wouldn't work. Like if people were compassionate, leaking stuff that came from phone hacks wouldn't work. People would be like, how did you get that gross? And that's not the response. Um, the response is, ooh. But again, that's the internet. If Amber loses her appeal, could there be a scope for the UK ruling to be overturned? Um, the one doesn't have anything to do with the other. So from what I understand of the UK, and again, Black Belt Barrister is an attorney in the UK. I am not. From what I understand in the UK is that the appeals process is kind of run. If there's any way to reinitiate that appeals process, I'm sure we will see it or at least see discussion of it from creators in the UK. What I have seen is that the appeals avenue there had been denied. If there is any way to reinvigorate that, I do not know what it is. But Amber Heard's appeal here doesn't impact that because Amber Heard's a party in this case, not a party in that case. And again, my podcast on why these two cases are different, the parties are different, why it didn't come in, will help break that down a little bit more too. But Amber Heard is not a party in the UK case. The UK son was. The rulings are different. The findings are different. The evidence is different. So what happens in this case 
should not impact that case and vice versa. Um, Kolojo every three months, they were like that really bad cocktail. You wish you didn't have the night before sad. Neither of them got out before they got married. It definitely seems like it was a toxic relationship all the way around 12th heaven astrology. Love you and your coverage is always a random question, but do you know your astrological sun, moon, and rising? <laughs> I do know my astrological sun, moon, and rising. Are, are you asking me to share them or are you asking me if I know them? Is that me being coy? Is this information I should or should not be sharing in the internet? I don't know. Is this information we don't share on the internet? Tell, is it too much? Do we want to know? Are we asking? 12th Heaven Astrology, let me know if you're asking and I will share it. Because I do know them, if that's the question. <laughs> so, and you guys are all welcome to share yours as well in the chat, if that's not too much information. I don't know. Is it too much information? Um... Batul Muhammad said, Hi, Emily, you're my favorite badass lawyer. Love from UAE. Well, thank you. T in Tennessee, I wonder if there was concern over what else he would say with Deuters, probably. If this is abuse, why wouldn't Amber Heard want his wife to testify? And if she was on the plane, I think they would want her to testify. Uh, Stephen Deuters is CEO of Into Film, Johnny Depp's UK and European-based film and television production company. Good information to know. I didn't know that. Uh, true. Thank you. Steven said he was placating Amber Heard in those texts. And Leah H., I think there's a way to read that as that, given all the testimony we've seen. You, some of you guys are like, don't share. Too much information to share. <laughs> um, how do you find out behind besides your sign you can have your birth chart read? Um, when you are paranoid, it's all too much information. I mean, I've been on the internet long enough that I get nervous about things now because because the inter because the internet because the internet. So, because I never know. Because I never, again, because I never know. Um, I love George. He is even over Elaine. George is over all of it, I think. Hello, Mikkel. Love from Sweden. Thank you. Um, Brenda said, love Lonard's tea. Got lots of comments when I wear them. Love Emily D. Baker, says a retired attorney. Thank you, Brenda. Aren't they fun? Today, I think I have on my eye of questions. I can't even show you because now my eye of questions is I have cat hair and it's completely, oh, it doesn't even matter. It's just, it just is. We've been, we've been paw nerded. We're just going to scoot, we're just going to scoot up a little bit. I just sent my first super chat and forgot to send the message with it. I do that all the time. I want to see all those text messages that have been in the MSM. I want to read them all with the full context. I don't know if we'll ever get the full context, but yes. Question with this doc being released the media is stating that this proves Depp shouldn't have won. They are doing a Depp smear campaign thoughts. I have not looked a ton at what the legacy media has been saying because I find it exhausting. Um, to It's interesting the way things get characterized and whose lens you are looking through and which lens they are looking. It's just, it can be exhausting and it can be a lot. Um, I don't think those texts that we've gone through Prove that Depp should have won. The evidence that came in, again, this is what an appeal is for. The evidence that came in is the evidence that the jury heard. If there were improper evidentiary rulings, then that's what the basis of appeal is for. If there are gross improper evidentiary rulings, a new trial can be ordered. I think it's unlikely. Those particular texts in the form that they are being presented here are not proper evidence. So saying that someone should have won a case based on evidence that's not proper legal evidence is difficult for me. What do those texts show? That there's a lot of context that didn't come in. But I wish that the media would juxtapose it between the email where you have, you know, Whitney Henriquez's former boss saying she told me she was lying because that didn't come in either. So it's on both sides and I feel like both sides of evidence was being kept out is not presented. And oftentimes I feel like it's being presented in a way as if something was improper. And I have not seen anything that was improper at this point. And I think there's a lack of understanding for our rules of evidence. David Murphy is a tall, more husky guy on Amber's team that reminds uh, you like Wayne Dennison on JD's team. He didn't have much airtime. Not surprising, not memorable. Thank you, Patty. I'm uh, just not... 
Um, nobody knows. Some of the behind the scenes stuff seems unethical. Is the bar really that low for ethical versus advocacy? Or does it seem like it to non-law folk? The things that happen in civil law all center around zealous advocacy. So I don't like all of it, but it centers around zealous advocacy. And I hear my youngest, which means I'm going to have to get going. Ooh, in just a moment, we've been streaming for quite a long time. I'm going to try to speed run some of these. Yvonne, have you read House and Habit Substack story of Amber Heard allegedly hosting party? I do not want to get into any of it because if these are rumors, again, they do not have anything to do for me with this case, with the legal grounds of this case. And I don't personally know what purpose it serves um, with this because again, it's not, it's not proper evidence that should come in. It's like the part of the deposition that was talking about whatever Amber Heard was up to with Elon Musk after the marriage. It's just not relevant. And with it not being relevant, it doesn't have anything to do with this. Um, but I think that type of speculation or gossip or allegations will keep spinning up the more that they're, the more that the legacy media is going to try to continue to tear into Johnny Depp's character, the more that I think non-traditional media is going to continue to push back on Amber Heard's character. And I think that's why this continues to play out and why this continues to dig up. But for my purposes, it really is what happened in court is the evidence that came in properly evidence that came in is the evidence that get kept out evidence that properly got kept out. And so I don't really get too much into the gossip on the outside of the case because it's not relevant to this case. What was kept out of this case I'm interested in, but a lot of it so far that was kept out was properly kept out. So I just don't think it's going to stop. And I wonder if the way that the media is continuing to dig into Johnny Depp shouldn't have won is going to continue to fan the flames on, yeah, but what about what about what Amber Heard did or said? I just wonder. Um, Jess C said, I read it was barely weighed more than a pen cap. That's probably going to Brittany Griner. I just, again, it, when I talk about news cases, which is rare, but when there is breaking news during the show and I'm like, oh, that just happened. It is, it, it, it's a hard position to break down because I am not a, a geopolitical expert. All of the ins and outs of Russia and why they do things and how they do things is a, not for me to comment on and be completely not within my realm of expertise. There are others who know much more. So for me, it seems like a lot. Um, but also other countries have their rules and I don't understand those rules. So it's hard to comment other than on this is what happened. And what are the contexts around that happening? What else could have factored into that happening? I think it's much less cut and dry than just this was in her possession, but also that's, that's what happened. And we will see what happens from here. Um, Janice said as a cannabis caregiver, the amount of time she got hurts my guts the fact they're possibly trading for an arms dealer is I don't even know. They're not even equal things. You've pro you've summed up my own internal kerfuffle better than I have. Natalie Lawyerchick did a stream on Alex Jones yesterday for those interested. K Rob, thank you so much. Natalie Lawyerchick is such an incredible content creator and lawyer. If you guys have not checked out her channel, do. She speaks with so much and not just courage, but conviction and is so fucking smart. So if you got, what, what are you, Natalie, my cats won't let me be great and plug your channel adequately. And for that, I am sorry. It's George. Just blame him. I think Fred kicked him out of the chair, but she does incredible breakdowns. So knowing that Natalie's breaking stuff down is fantastic. So you guys can go look for that. Um, and what I love, I love it when Natalie and I have conversations. Natalie and I are on kind of different and different sides of the courtroom in our professional careers. She's still a criminal defense attorney. I was a prosecutor. And I love when we get to chat and show how much we see eye to eye on. 
Um, hello from Sydney, Australia. I've been loving your content. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Long Crime also posted and mentioned the text in a new video and their tone was suddenly different, like as if all of a sudden, like as if they were suddenly defending her. I think Long Crime has been uh, pretty defensive of Amber Heard. There were times when they were reporting, you know, how she did certain things, but they get to, you know, everyone's going to have their own take on it. Question, um, Beards Redirect is not in your JDAH playlist. Was it? copy claimed i'm not sure what that's relating to i will go look i think everything's in my playlist that's on my channel i did not stream every 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 single day of the trial there was a period of time where i was at a conference um so that abra said been watching other content creators lots of emily d baker name dropping they're all law nerds now i mean that's very kind other creators have been so supportive slut law turds law blah Law nerds, did you hear the T got stuck in my law nerds, which means it's time to stop dreaming because my words can't even come out properly. We need to do a meetup sometime. Instead of coffee and cursy words two times a week, can Emily D. Baker serve the legal tea on Thirsty Thursday? I don't know if we get that salacious to actually advertise it as tea. I'm usually part of the replay crew, but returned from surgery, so I'm off work and can finally catch a live stream. Well, quick healing to you, D. Um, Xantos, and I hope you are well. Um... Your makeup looks fantastic fantastic today. Come through lashes. Thank you. I have on a different eyeliner than I normally wear. Um, Elizabeth Young said that nine years is lenient. See, I would need to go, this is why. I'm just like, this happened. And don't give a lot more context because I don't have the context. Russian Olympic squad was banned four years for doping. Was banned for doping two years. Yeah, that I did know. Um, and remember that because some of them were, well, a lot of them were um, competing out of the Federation. For the mom life, I love Emily. I love everything you do, the way you do it, and how I would watch a live of you breaking down coffee. Thanks so much for your content. You're welcome. Hopefully, we won't get to that content. Just a thank you. Um, I wasn't fulfilled, and your TED Talk helped me realize what I wanted in life, and I finally had the courage to say it out loud. Here's to my next chapter, unknown but exciting. Courtney McKinney, congratulations. It is scary to sometimes say I'm not happy in what I'm doing and I need a change, especially when you wanted to do the thing you were doing when you started doing it. Movie Myths and Monsters, same thing happened to Depp with his text. They were quote-unquote leaked to NGM before the UK trial from Brown Redneck. 70K messages handed over. I remember when Depp's messages, a lot of Depp's stuff came out that wasn't necessarily ordered to come out. Emily, do you think, what do you think about the media coverage about these documents? They seem to be turning a blind eye to everything. Amber, I, as I, well, I think I answered earlier that I haven't dove into all of it. I wish it would be more, like, this was kept out on Amber's side. This was kept out on Johnny Depp's side. You decide. I wish there was more of a presenting of facts and letting the audience decide than content that is specifically more advers not adversarial, but more advocacy. Because a lot of the content I've seen is advocacy. See, this supports our position. It's not really just presenting information. So Amber said the metadata has been released. Um, I think other countries see Americans as spoiled and entitled they may revel in dishing out punishment. I, again, cannot comment, do not know. Um, again, geopolitical conflict and how Americans are viewed is not something I can well comment on because I don't know. It's hard, again, hard to comment from things not from my own perspective because I just don't feel like I have the, I don't know, the knowledge base to comment on it in an intelligent way. So I don't want to comment on things that I truly don't know enough about. Sorry, but what does sanctions mean, Leanne? It means the court punishes you. It's monetary timeout. So sometimes you can get in trouble with the state bar, depending on how much you're sanctioned. Hunter said, fellow adhd -er, I just wanted to tell you that I finished my first semester in paralegal school with my first ever 4.0. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, 8FCA8, how, co how come... Some evidence isn't allowed in. Some of these seem rather smoking gun, so to speak. The evidence has to meet the rules of evidence for veracity. And so like the Deuters text, if he had testified, some of that could have come in, I would imagine, if it was authenticated. But our rules of evidence are very specific when it comes to how things come in and why they come in. And that that matters. We have We have rules. You can't just have, oh, well, somebody told me they heard this thing. That's hearsay. It doesn't come in. So um, let's see. 
I would think she would want to turn over anything and everything to prove her case. M. Grant, some of that's strategic. You don't prove over, you don't turn over more than you have to. Elaine, quit tampering with the evidence. We all know your past allegedly. Well, we've seen the articles and we've heard what Rob had to say. Do you need any more bracelets? No, but I do need to share some of those with the Lonards. I've been meaning to do that. Um, Movies Myth the Monsters. Amber had blocked JD's phone number and was playing uh, Stephen about the phone not working. There's a series of her different texts to different people out of the UK case that shows it. I haven't looked at the evidence in the UK case that didn't come in in this case. I'm so grateful for you in this community where we can be human, learn, laugh, and be respectful. Even with people we have trouble giving respect, you're the best. Be kind. Thank you. It is. We can we can be respectful even of people we don't respect, and that's something we're learning how to do. Um, Stacy said, I'm sick today by the Twitter attacks on Johnny over his ED. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to that part of the filings with. I don't know how they get away with what they're saying. Isn't it disability discrimination? Twitter, Twitter says the things. So I, I have not looked into that at all. I have actually been limiting, other than interacting with Lawnards, I've been limiting my time on Twitter significantly because um, it just kind of wild, wilds out. And that is uh, something that is just at sometimes too much, truly. And so I understand more why a lot of content creators are like, this is too much for me today. It's a constant barrage of information. A lot of it is negative. And that is more than... Um, more than in a lot of places. But with that, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye. I let you know what the podcast is for next week. I have let you know what the podcast is for this week. The podcast corresponding video is on the channel now. The Emily Show is all over your favorite podcasting apps if you want to just have me in your ear for something else. And with that, it is time to say goodbye. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I will see you soon. Oh, Trish asks, what are the exceptions to hearsay? An entire year of law school. <laughs> An entire year in law school um, is what they are. So with that, it is time to say goodbye. Law nerds, thank you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I will see you Tuesday for Coffee and Cursey Words at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. <laughs> And we'll figure out time zones at some point. They're very confusing. Bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.